just a sled, it's a priority. And by the Sega Las Vegas Bowl, where the Mountain West and the Pac-10 meet on Christmas Day. The Lobos are two and three. They came back with a 30-29 win last week against the Cowboys of Wyoming. Head coach Rocky Long in his fourth season, one and one in the Mountain West Conference. The ex-defensive coordinator from UCLA, who was a graduate assistant here after he quarterbacked the Lobos and was their MVP in 69, 70, and 71. It is indeed a Chamber of Commerce kind of afternoon here at University Stadium, and glad you're on board for our Mountain West Game of the Week. Sunny skies. It was darn right cold this morning. You knew that front was coming in last night. J.C. went to the uh, ski shop and got himself a parka. Sure did, and fortunately, I don't have to use that as of yet. <laughs> 51 is a magic number. It's what BYU averages on offense, and it's the 51st meeting with the Cougars enjoying a rather comfortable edge. New Mexico actually won the toss and they have elected to kick off so they'll spot it at the 35 yard line. Back deep. Mike Regal number eight. Paul Peterson number 24 and to do the deep kicking number 32 the 5 8 freshman from New Brantles Texas Wes Zunker. Underway live in Albuquerque. Two yards deep. Regal hammered at the 15. Brand new feature this week. Let's check in with our ESPN Plus playbook. New Mexico had better be ready for this play, especially when number 20, Reno Mahi's in the backfield. They're just going to spread you out. Trips to one side, split to the other, and puts the pressure on the backer and the Lobo. These wide receivers are excellent blockers, so they'll just throw the screen out to the running back and take off with it. It happens very fast and very quick because they don't have to wait for those linemen to get out there in front of them. The tailback is the junior, number 20, Reno Mahe. Works with Ned Stearns. Doman. First down inside New Mexico territory. A beauty. What a way to open up. That's the way to open this, this ball game. You lose your running back, so what do you do? You just come out and air it out. What a great throw by, by Brandon Doman right on the money to Doug Jolly. And that's the, the exact way that New Mexico did not want to start is by giving up something over the top. The numbers on the senior quarterback, 6'1", 195, out of Salt Lake City, 13 touchdowns and only two picks. He also can rush. He's averaging just about five yards per carry when he does carry the ball. And the option, Ned Stearns barrels inside the New Mexico 30. Let's check the Cougars now, the backs and the receivers. Ned Stearns, we already talked about him, a lot of pressure. Starting for Stanley, who is out. And again, that announcement made just a few minutes before kickoff. McCubbins, look at the beef there, 295. Answering that old commercial, where's the beef? It's up front in the Cougar line. Spot it just outside the 30. Doman dumps at the 26. To Wilkerson out of Orem, Utah, the freshman, his second catch of the game. He came in with seven catches, averaging about 20 yards per. In the grasp of Nick Spiegel, one of Albuquerque's own. One sack for Nick on the season with Terrell Golden, number three, helping out from the secondary. Gary Davis leads the conference in sacks. He also leads the Lobos in tackles. Out of the eye pro set, Stearns. Behind those big horses up front, Whitley, Riker, Tony Mazzotti on the stop, out of Walnut Creek, California, number 99. BYU so far doesn't seem to have changed their game plan at all without Luke Staley. Ned Stearns, a couple pretty good runs early. We'll see if he's going to be able to hold up because he's going to get a lot of work today, not only running the ball, but he's got to catch it out of the backfield. Ward wide to the right. Third and a short one. First down inside the 20, blocking up front by Archibald and McCubbins. 
Mazzotti on the stop for New Mexico. Pretty impressive, JC, inside the red zone, the Cougars are, huh? They're more than pretty impressive. They are extremely impressive. 26 of 28, 92% in the red zone, and 23 touchdowns. I mean, that is a tremendous stat. I mean, these guys, with this offense, they are really on track to do some, some incredible things all year. Little dump off, Mahi with a block. Out of bounds at the 15-yard line. Dante Childress was over there on the coverage. 17 different BYU receivers involved in the passing game in that 5 and 0 record. 17. There are a lot of teams that don't even have 17 receivers on their entire roster and now they've thrown to 17 different receivers and seven of those guys have over 100 yards. So this offense really is tough to defense. Out of the eye and the shotgun now. With the audible, Doman, he's got the capability and the green light to do all the freelancing he wants. He did that and saved a big loss with his natural athleticism. Chased out just, by Kegler. And he just drops the ball. It goes right through his hands, but good heads up play by Doman. You see, he's got some athletic ability. He makes a couple guys miss and just salvages whatever he can, but. Doman is the guy that makes this offense work. You're going to see him come to the line of scrimmage. He's going to see what the defense is presenting, and you're going to a lot of times see him change the play at the line of scrimmage. So it all starts with him. Ford out to the top of the screen. Third and 13. Blitz. They pick it up. Wide open at the 15. And stopped shy by about a yard and a half was Holiday out of New Hall, California. He came in with eight catches, averaging about 12 and a half per catch in the grasp of Adrian Terry, number 95, the junior from Washington State. One thing they like to do is get yards after the catch. Yak, that's how they make their big plays. And for New Mexico, they've got to make sure they are sure tacklers today. They've got to wrap those guys up and not allow them to get many yards after the catch. The coach is going for it on fourth and a short two. Halliday. Doman now with the audible. Stearns to his right. Motion right side of the line. That was Archibald, the right tackle. And that'll alter the play call. So on fourth and two, Archibald with the early motion. Matt Pine is their freshman field goal kicker. He's been four of nine on the season, two of three from 20 to 29. This will be spotted at the 33 or 34 yard line, or at the 23 or 24, so it's a 34 yard try. Far hash mark. And the Cougars get on the board first. First possession for BYU. They come in with an impressive 5-0 mark. They're 17th in the country. Best start since 84. The Cougars on top early. Every time you use your Discover card, Discover will make a donation to America's relief efforts until we reach our goal of $5 million. Just by doing what you do every day, you can help the victims and families of September 11th. To find out more, call 1-800-DISCOVER or go to discovercard.com. Larry H. Miller's Mountain West Conference pregame show is brought to you in part by Larry H. Miller. After all, you know this guy. By R.C. Willie. Nobody beats R.C. Willie. Nobody. By AT&T Wireless. Wireless from AT&T. Your world close at hand. And by Zions Bank. Zions Bank. We haven't forgotten who keeps us in business. And by the Deseret News. The newspaper of the fan. When you want to show someone they're special, visit the flower cottage with a special touch. The Rose Shop. We bring a unique blend of personal attention and attractive designs that touch the heart and please the eye. 
beautiful floral arrangements, balloon bouquets, and gourmet gift baskets that add genuine charm to any occasion. Weddings to anniversaries, holidays to birthdays, and more. The Rose Shop. Show someone they're special. Officially a 33-yard field goal by Pine. Cougars first possession, 11-18 to go in the first University Stadium. Live, our Mountain West Conference game of the week. The Lobos trying to even up their record at 3-3. Three and three. Hansen is back deep. Edmonds bangs it and it'll be the touchback. So our first look at the Lobos on offense. Quick scoring by the Cougars nine scoring drives under a minute. Some of those were under 40 seconds for BYU. So what do you do. You try to shorten the game. You work on the clock and we can tell you JC and I that the Cougars will keep your eye on that lower left. They're going to use all the time in the world. Let that clock run down. Caught near the 25 and he steps out of bounds. That's Dwight Conner out of Lancaster, Texas, his 21st catch of the season. I'm a little surprised there were still nine ten seconds left. I mean last night the New Mexico coaches told us they were going to let it get down to three or four. And of course that was the first play of the game. They're going to want to do that as this game progresses. Whenever whenever they've got the ball they want to snap it at two or three seconds. Obviously when he stepped out of bounds they won't let it run down quite as much. Up near the 30 yard line goes Baxter the big senior out of New Mexico he averages just under five yards per rush and big number 55 Justin Enna the middle linebacker you're going to hear that number a lot today and he's a big inside backer 261 pounds and in talking to him yesterday he said this defense needs to start faster they need to come out with more intensity and get started early. Third and a long one. Motion by Manning. First down Lobos up near the 40 yard line. The junior running back out of Lancaster California still looking for his first Lobo score of the year averaging about four and a half yards per rush. Joe Manning. New Mexico they're going to run different plays and this is just that fly series. This is what they've been running. They handed to Joe Manning probably the fastest player on their team and he's able to get outside for a first down but look for them to change up their personnel a lot different formations and plays that they have not run this season. And counting. Kelly caught approaching midfield Dwight counter. <laughs> Grasp of Gilford. And you see them just standing at the line of scrimmage. It's hard to wait until two or three seconds is left on the clock before you snap it. They just run a quick stop outside and good throw by Casey Kelly. But you see those guys just standing there for a while and they've got to get accustomed to that also. They're not used to doing it. So it's going to be interesting, interesting to see as this game goes on if they consciously continue to, to snap it at two or three. Second and two from the 47. Flood to the right, slot to the left. Quarterback draw, first down New Mexico. Hammered at the 45 is Casey Kelly. That's Rietta on the stop. They said they were going to change it up, and this is a good way, just the quarterback draw. Casey Kelly's got a lot of ability, and he's able to get the first down. That's what they've got to do. They've got to keep these chains moving, get about, they need eight 10 play drives today. And try to keep that offense on the sideline. Line of scrimmage, the 43 for the Lobos. Baxter, not much as he dances behind Sorensen and B.J. Long. 
about a game and a half for Casey Kelly under his belt, but he really matured last week against the Cowboys. This is his second start of the season, but he can't play like a guy who's just starting his second game. He's got to play like a big time guy today for New Mexico to have any success. Ken Schmidt, the defensive coordinator for the Cougars of BYU, looked to take advantage of some of that inexperience. He said, hey, he's only started a game and a half or so. There are a lot of defensive schemes that he hasn't seen. So that's what the Cougars were hoping to throw at him. Robbins wide to the left, Manning in the backfield. Second and seven. Wiggins with a carry that hole sealed off in a hurry. Baxter in the backfield averaging under 100 yards. Wiggins on that last carry. Joe Manning the fastest player. Good offensive line. Claude Terrell they are so hot on the freshman from Texas City. They say he's got a chance to be one of the best in the history of Lobo football. Flood to the right slot to the left third and six from the 39. Guy of first down yardage at the 36 came Kirk Robbins. He averages about 7.7 .7 yards per catch. That was his fourth reception on the year. What about the Cougars defensively? Although well, they've got the big front four led by Ryan Denny, 6'7, 275 at the right end position. The linebackers, again, I said, are huge. Justin in it inside. He's their main guy at 261 pounds. The secondary, Dustin Staley, Luke's brother. 14 tackles on the season. Crowd trying to get into it and help the Lobos out on fourth and two from the shotgun. Well, three out of five on fourth down conversions for the year. That was Wiggins out of Los Angeles. Casey Kelly really looking good so far. They just run the empty backfield and just throw the out. It's just an easy throw for Kelly. He's, he's got a lot of poise for a guy making his second start. And that's one thing they liked about him. This guy doesn't rattle very easy, doesn't get down on himself. And that's why offensive coordinator Dan Dodd really likes him. On the other side of the line, the Cougar coaches wanted to get their defense involved early. They were th somewhat slow, a little lethargic in the last couple of games. So they've got to play the whole game like it's nothing, nothing. Mix up in the backfield. Kelly dumps it out. Wants to go deep. This one is in. Oh. Almost hit the pylon. He did a good job of getting rid of it. Because big Ryan Denny really was was humming on him and, and laid a hit on him. Looked like counter got up limping just a little bit. Michael Lafitte out of Peoria, Arizona was back there in the coverage. And watch the hit that Denny puts on Casey Kelly. That's a 6'7", 275 pound guy. You don't want that guy to hit your quarterback too often. Or ever. Or ever. That's right. Wiggins. Robbins. On second and ten. Just outside the 30. Well it worked once. This time the Cougars snuffed it out. Jeff what, Howard out of Tacoma on the hip. What they're doing is they're spreading this defense out. They know this defense is big and strong. They're running empty backfield. They just run the quarterback draw doesn't get any yards but what they want to do is spread these guys out try to create some natural seams and hopefully be able to hit them somewhere line of scrimmage the 32 yard line first New Mexico possession after a 33 yard field goal put BYU on top three zip picked off at the 11 yard line Aaron Francisco first pick of the year for the freshman and that was a bad throw by Kelly it was a bad throw by Kelly he just misreads the defense and he just throw overthrows his receiver and throws it right in the hands of Aaron Francisco it looks like he thought that the that the slot receiver was going to run a deep dig and come across the middle but the receiver just hooked up you can see just some miscommunication. He throws the ball, and he's expecting that guy right there. And it looks like it's number eight counter to, to run the dig, and he just stops. Second possession now for BYU. Pressure on Doman, dumps it off, and that was a good play. 
Second interception on the season, by the way, for Casey Kelly, and the first pick by Francisco. Kegler, the first to arrive there for New Mexico. Watch 93 with a good pressure. Well, they've got to get some pressure on Dolman. They can't let him just sit back there and throw the football. And then without Luke Staley in that running game, they want to sit back in, in pass coverage, make BYU run the ball, prove to them that Stearns can handle the running game. First incompletion of the afternoon for Dome. Raguel comes out wide to the left side. Doman can run or pass. Out of bounds up near the 36 yard line chased out by Gary Davis six sacks on the season and the leading tackler from that right linebacker spot for New Mexico. They're just going to bring the pressure inside on Doman. He's got nowhere to throw because the cornerbacks Persley and Crockett were in bump and run coverage on his wide receivers and did a good job of throwing off the timing of the route. He's got nowhere to go and he's got to run it. That's going to be a big key for New Mexico. Can their corners bump and run these wide receivers? Stearns the running back third and two. Flag day. Down. Movement on that left side. Daniel Kegler, the sophomore from the defensive end spot. And he called offsides against the defense, but he gave the, the illegal motion signal, <laughs> which goes against the offense. So we know what he meant. Bronco Mendenhall in his fourth year. New faces on defense and less experienced than last year. Doman on the fly. Incomplete at the 18, missed by about two yards, looking in the direction of Wilkerson. Going back to Bronco, the defensive coordinator for, for the Lobos, you got to believe that he felt a lot better knowing that Staley was going to be out of the game today. Yesterday he said this is the most complex offense he's ever had to, to try to game plan for. You take that running aspect out of it, it makes it a lot easier to cover. He didn't know if it was the BYU offense or seeing his new son for the first time and spending a week at home that was causing all the sleepless nights. Second and ten, BYU. Stern. Across midfield. Again, number five, Luke Staley is not playing. An announcement made literally just before the kickoff. And Stearns is coming to the ball game. He's had some pretty good runs. He's only had nine rushes for 48 yards on the season. But he looks good, but obviously they're going to really miss Luke Staley and his versatility. And his nine touchdowns. And 119 yards average rushing a game. Stearns the low running back. Pretty good lateral pursuit that time by the Lobo defense. Zotti, second solo tackle of the afternoon. That's one thing this defense will do is run to the football. They're aggressive and, and everyone thinks that all they're going to do is, is blitz you and run up the field haphazardly but these guys there's a method to the madness these guys know exactly where they're supposed to be at the snap of the ball and one thing they do is pride themselves on gang tackle stats of the man from Lebanon Oregon the senior averaging about five and a half yards per carry coming into the game Doman on second and nine dropped at the 39 that's something you don't see the Cougar receivers do very often Raguel. Let's go down to the sidelines, Beth. Well, on that last play defensively with Scott Gerhardt putting the pressure on Brandon Doman, he is the guy that Bronco Mendenhall says directs this defense. He is the calming factor out there, and he is the one that has to hold the group together today, especially on big plays like this third down. Jim? Bronco was telling Beth and JC and I last night, pursuit angles a key for that defense today against BYU. Third and nine from the 48. Doman batted down almost intercepted and the first to get there was Gary Davis talked about him being the leading tackler 
saved a first down there because number 10 Andrew Lord was open as was Toby Christensen Gary Davis their big play guy on defense the Mountain West Conference defensive player of the week last week at 13 tackles against Wyoming does a good job of getting his hands up getting in the passing lanes how about this only 14 punts on the season for BYU. I mean, they think they've got one of the best punters in the nation. He averages about 43.6 yards per punt, but he doesn't have enough stats to be ranked. Fair catch at the eight. So we'll take a timeout. 4:16 to go in the first, live at University Stadium in New Mexico. Cougars on top by three. Keep your business moving in the right direction. You need to make the best decisions about your image. Fast Signs offers sign and graphic solutions to make your choices simple. With locations coast to coast, Fast Signs is ready to keep your business moving. Fast Signs, sign and graphic solutions made simple. Call, click, or visit a Fast Signs location near you. Sometimes the neighborhood boys get a little too enthusiastic with their baseball. Well, that's just fine with Phil. You boys play all the baseball or, for that matter, football you want. But if a soccer ball ever goes through his window, <laughs> well, 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 you'll have words with the High Life Man. This is an ordinary cell phone. This is Nextel, and it's going to change the way you do business thanks to Direct Connect, its digital two-way radio feature. Frank, you see it? Not yet. It ensures instant contact. Bridget. Got it. Cost a fraction of cellular. It just passed. And it makes other cell phones... Ready now. Obsolete. Nextel Direct Connect, the digital two-way radio feature that lets you get right through. Nothing, a 33-yard BYU field goal on the Cougars' first possession. Lobo's second possession, first one ended with an interception. Dwight Counter. Explosive speed up near the 16. Guilford on the hit. How the Lobos have done against ranked teams. They've lost their last four, including BYU back then in October of 99. Texas Tech, October of 95. This is a big game, big home game. First time the Lobos have been here in six weeks. And if they can win this game today, of course, it's, it's huge for their season and the confidence of their players. Baxter. Bangs it across the right side with Claude Terrell leading the way. In the grasp of Paul Walking Horse out of Highland, Utah, number 47. This BYU defense, although they are big and physical and strong, they're real basic. They're vanilla. They're just going to line up in one place and they're going to play. And when you do that, it makes it easier for a team to game plan against you because they know where you're going to line up on every single play. After starting at their own eight, they've moved it up near the 23. First and ten, Manning. Slotted out to the left side. Casey Kelly near the 31 to Dwight Counter. They're just playing pitch and catch. They're doing a good job of mixing up their plays. They're running the ball inside. They're trying to get to the edge. And then when they throw the ball, they're throwing it quick, like we see right here. Just a quick stop outside by Counter. And they're going to move him all over the place. He may even line up in the backfield some today because when they throw the ball, he's going to be their primary receiver. He's evolved into their go-to guy. What Kelly has done so far this afternoon. From the 31, second and two. Inside handoff. Good move by Wiggins. On the replay, you see they're just going to run this counter. Wiggins does a good job of making the first guy miss. That's something that they 
wanted him to work on. He's got decent speed and, and vision, but they, they wanted him to be able to work on his elusiveness, and obviously he's done that because he made the first guy miss. Lobos are one out of three on third down conversions. They need two to keep the ball. What a defensive read. Great play by Isaac Kelly out of American Fork, Utah. Three sacks on the season now, the 6'4", 240-pound senior. And what they're hoping is that he's going to bite down on the play action fake and then they're able to boot outside of him. But Isaac Kelly, he doesn't buy the fake at all. He comes straight up field like he's supposed to do and is able to come up with a big sack. Loss of 13 on the play. It brings up fourth and 11. Boren Bozen back at his own seven yard line. Did they use too much time? Stay here. Dead ball. Delay of game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still fourth down. They obviously didn't understand. Snap it with two seconds left. Don't let it run all the way out. Lobos had 17 penalties in their game against UTEP. But he said, hey, that was a whack crew. UTEP only had six. But penalties have hurt New Mexico all year. Warren Bosa, a beauty. Rigel backs up. Pretty good coverage by the specialty team. Good job by their coach, Jeff Conway. So just a four-yard return for Rigel. Cougars ball when we come back live to New Mexico. BYU unbeaten and on top. A squad is a unit that's together, so you're only as good as the slowest person in your squad. It's not about me anymore. We need to get through this together. Everybody gets the same training. It doesn't matter if you go on active or reserve. Log on. Watch me become we. Let's go! Only at GoArmy.com. Would you trust these baby blues, these pearly whites, or this spun gold to just any care product? You don't have to. In an imperfect world, there's perfect choice. Each formula is created to match the quality and integrity of national brands, and yet they cost less. They're guaranteed to give your family the care every strand of hair and every little elbow deserves. Perfect choice. Your choice for exceptional quality. Available at Smith's. Leading the way. Ford's leading the way. Your Ford stores want to drive America with absolutely no interest loans on Ford cars, trucks, and SUVs. For the first time ever, pay no interest for the life of your loan on Ford vehicles. That's interest-free financing on cars like Focus and Taurus, trucks like Ranger and F-Series, and no interest on Ford SUVs. Interest-free financing from your heart of the West Ford stores to help drive America. So after that 54-yard punt by Boren Bozen and a four-yard return by Regal, the line of scrimmage, the 32-yard line, first and 10, BYU on top after that 33-yard field goal on their very first possession. Stearns replacing Luke Staley in there at the running back. Staley did not start. It's an eligibility issue that was announced literally just before the kickoff. Option, pitch back to Stearns. Blocking on the right side by Archibald and McCubbins. Time now for the Phillips 66 Player of the Week. Honors ironically go to Luke Staley, who last week scored a conference record five touchdowns and rushed how much, J.C.? 207 yards. And they are sorely going to miss him today. I think they are missing him. Wilkerson and Stearns in the eye pro set. Stearns, good pursuit by the Lobos defensively. Now you could say that the Lobos might 
be licking their chops because Staley's not there, or they might just be playing with a little renewed intensity. Oh, no question about it. And you'll see Terrell Golden does a good job taking on the fullback right there, and he's the guy that makes the play. He makes Stearns bubble back, and then Gary Davis comes and wraps him up. But if they can stop this running game and then just focus on the pass and take something away from this BYU offense, they're going to be successful today. Well, Bronco Mendenhall was saying that one of his keys defensively was to disrupt the rhythm of what they were going to do. And on the last couple of series, well, the Lobos have done exactly that. Looking for the third win of the year here at home, New Mexico, doing a good job against the 17th ranked Cougars. Hi everybody, I'm Scott Christopher, the KGS TV Movie Guy, inviting you to join me here this Saturday, big Halloween time. We got kind of a scary one. Check it out. Shane! Hey, Mrs. Shane! Rutger Hauer stars in The Descendants. It's like a beetle. Anyway, I'll see you Saturday night. He he wasn't. Mouthpiece, ankle brace. Now isn't the time to provide some real protection. Beneficial life, the good life. Morris Motors is making it affordable for you to drive home in your favorite new 2002 Chrysler or Jeep. Morris has combined incredible discounts with special finance rates to make it happen. Drive the new 2002 PT Cruiser for just $2.97 a month. New Jeep Liberties are as little as $3.32 a month. And the off-road around town classic Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo is an all-time low $2.99 per month. Hurry in for a new 2002 you can afford at Morris Motors in Provo. Mountain West football, our game of the week. The Cougars unbeaten and ranked 17th in the country up against the Lobos of New Mexico here in Albuquerque. Third and four from the 38. One out of three in third down conversion. Senior quarterback Brandon Doman. Pitch and catch. Oh, what a hit at the 45-yard line. Scott Gerhardt out of Oklahoma City with three interceptions on the season. What a collision. Great job of driving on the football. They're blitzing, so there's no help inside, and he just comes. That's the way you come and separate the receiver from the football. Right there, the great. That's training film. We call that training film. That's exactly how you want to come in and strike those little receivers, especially when the ball's just getting there. Two punts this game, only 14 on the season coming in for Aaron Edmonds. The 5'11", 192-pound senior. When he does kick it, he averages just under 44 yards. Longest on the year was 57 yards, and he gets a pretty good spot. So it'll be Lobo's ball down by three at their own 20 when we come back live. time you use your Discover card, Discover will make a donation to America's relief efforts until we reach our goal of $5 million. Just by doing what you do every day, you can help the victims and families of September 11th. To find out more, call 1-800-DISCOVER or go to discovercard.com.
3,300 choice hotels in the U.S. and the Caribbean. Just want to thank everyone for traveling again and getting back to experiencing the power of being there. It's the fastest growing sport in the country. A sport defined by performance, determination, and teamwork. The pros know when conditions lean to the extreme, you gotta go with the performer. And the 66 team is driven to perform. To protect your engine start to finish, drive with Phillips 66 Trop Arctic Premium Quality Motor Oil. Think smart, think performance, think Phillips 66, the performance company. 14.48 left to go live in the first half. First and 10 for the Lobos of New Mexico on the short end. First quarter stats, and of course they are missing Luke Staley. But when you look at those stats, especially if you're the Lobos, you've got to be happy that you've been able to, to hold BYU to 42 yards rushing and 57 yards passing, and you've got 61 total yards yourself. New Mexico's ball, Casey Kelly out of Portland, Oregon, the sophomore quarterback, works with Baxter. Dropped at the 27-yard line by Terrence Thomas. You know, there was a writer a couple of weeks ago before the Wyoming game that said, you know, he's pretty tough on him. He said that the butter-fingered receivers of the Lobos, the defense was not playing with the intensity of a year ago in the offensive scheme lacked imagination and focus and he's a hometown writer that was pretty tough well that's bulletin board material and, and those kids read that stuff especially from the hometown guys and, and i'm sure they take it personally as well as the coaching staff does so they want to come out and nobody wants to play as as well as the players want to play so you know, the guy needs to chill out a little bit Cutting it back against the grain was Holman Wiggins out of Los Angeles, the senior running back who averages about five and a half yards per carry. Down on the sidelines, Beth Mullen. Well, guys, former walk-ons have found great success at New Mexico. In fact, they make up some of the key components of this year's team, including Casey Kelly and Jared Baxter. They say they wear their former walk-on status as a badge of honor. It gives them an edge out there. And Rocky Long agrees. He says walk-ons have the want to. And that pretty much sums up the way this New Mexico team plays. Third and six from their own 24. Casey Kelly can run for it if he wants to. Pulls it down. Upended, but gets the first down with that last serve. What a great effort by Casey Kelly. And I'll tell you, this New Mexico team, offensively and defensively, they're playing with a lot of, of pep in their step. And you can see Casey Kelly, he's looking downfield. No one is open, so he pulls it down. And just a great effort at the end, the second effort right there to get a first down and keep this drive going. That's what they've got to do. They've got to put together some long drives, a lot of plays, to be able to control the clock. Counter wide to the left. Wiggins in the backfield. Kelly from the shotgun. Working on the clock. Trying to shorten the game against the explosive Cougars. Out of bounds at the 35 goes Robbins. Came into the game with three catches, averaging about eight yards per catch, but still looking for his first touchdown. And with the spread offense, what they're doing is making the safeties of BYU have to come up and play man-to-man -man coverage. Those safeties aren't used to playing man coverage. So there's an advantage for New Mexico whenever they can get a wide receiver locked in on a safety man to man. The advantage should go to the offense. Ken Schmidt the defensive coordinator been around 20 years from the defensive boss since 91 under of course the legendary Lavelle Edwards second and six from the 35. Baxter bangs it over that right side with Claude Terrell and McClure doing the blocking in the grasp of number 47 Paul Walkenhorst. Good job on this counter. You see big, big Clyde McClure and B.J. Long, those guys pulling and opening the hole inside for Jared Baxter. They wanted to initially attack this defense on the edges. And now they get those guys thinking outside and wide. Now they can bring big Baxter inside. Two out of five on third down conversions for the Lobo. Baxter. Has the first down for New Mexico up near their own 44-yard line. 
Gunderson on the hit out of Gresham, Oregon, the sophomore who weighs in at 280. Cowboys beaten last week by New Mexico. Tied up 7-7 against Air Force. Air Force will be the next opponent of BYU and ironically against the Lobos as well. New Mexico idol next week. Line of scrimmage the 44. Talk about a flood formation to the left. One on one. Misfire down near the tops of the shoe. Looking for Robin. And they're just taking a playbook from BYU's offense. They're running trips one side and split on the other side. They know that he's got to be singled on that single receiver side. But Casey Kelly's got to throw the ball in the air. Get some air under it. Allow his receiver a chance to run under the ball. Saw Rocky on the sideline. First home game there for the Lobos in six weeks. He said yesterday it feels kind of weird. Usually on a Friday, they're headed to the airport at noon to catch a charter flight. On Friday on a home game, the players aren't due in until about 5 o'clock. He was looking around for the players. Pitch out on second and 10. And look out. Wiggins. And more down near the 30 of the Cougars in the grasp of Michael Lafitte. As I said, they're doing a great job of mixing up their plays. Just like they said they were going to do. Now they come with the option in case he pitches it to Wiggins. But you can see a great block outside right there by number 15, Rashawn Sanders. And then Wiggins is able to make a couple guys miss for a big game for New Mexico. But give Dan Dodd, the offensive coordinator, a lot of credit. He said they were going to come in and show some plays that they have not even run all year. 25-yard pickup. That's Wiggins' longest run of the year. Previously, his longest was 19. Deepest penetration of the game. On the counter, they come right back. Wiggins bangs it down near the 23-yard line of BYU. Dustin Staley on the stop. BYU just overruns the play. You see they've got it stacked in the backfield, but nobody comes back in pursuit. Everybody overruns it. And Wiggins is able to stay on his feet and just find a hole and run through there. The middle linebacker, Justin Ennis, has got to stay home. He's got to always stay behind the football and then come up to make the tackle. He just over pursued. Wiggins now, five carries, 37 yards. Second and three. Motion by Manning. Baxter, big hole right side. They just follow Claude Terrell. Bailey on the stop. Just a great job again on this trap. They've been running it, and you can see right there, Claude Terrell comes backside and opens a big hole for Baxter, and he's able to hit it up inside. They have yet to stop that play. On the blackboard at the New Mexico practice facility, it says just one more point. That's what Dan Dodd scribbled for the week. One more point was all they wanted. That's all it takes to win. Just one more point. And around Derek Shepard, the junior out of Baytown, Texas. Well, there are a couple of things going on, I think, J.C. Number one, the variety of the formations and the play calling of Dan Dodd. Number two is set by the Cougars and kind of the same slow sluggish start that BYU was worried about and that's been their problem all years is they've been more conservative you know their philosophy is let's not give up any big plays we know our offense has been scoring at will almost so let's not give up any big plays but then you get very basic and very vanilla and teams can game plan for you Kelly with the audible second and seven Inside the 10, down near the 6, spins Derek Shepard. They're, they're just doing a great job right now. Make no mistake about it, offensively, New Mexico's doing a great job of mixing up their plays. And again, when they throw the ball, they're just going to throw it quick. And those corners are playing too far off. And anyone can go out there and complete a hitch outside. And then the receiver catches it, turns it up, and it's a five-yard game. This would be huge if the Lobos can punch it in. Mm -hmm. 
Manning and Thomas. Spin. Casey Kelly on the goal line. Again, a great job of mixing up the plays. You can see number 21 right there on the ground, the linebacker Isaac Kelly. He goes for the wide receiver because they've been running this play all day. He runs upfield instead of closing down where he's supposed to. They've been showing that play. He runs up the field. Casey Kelly now keeps it up and turns it up inside. Second and inches for the score. Baxter is the lone running back. Manning motion top of the screen. Baxter. His sixth rushing touchdown of the year, and the Lobos, who came in a two touchdown underdog, go up top with 8.38 to go before halftime. And right, why not run the play that you run all the way downfield? And they've yet to stop it. So when you need it most on the goal line, give it to Big Baxter on that counter. Boren Bozen has been perfect on the point afters all year. So the Lobos used up 6-10 on the clock. That was one of their keys to winning. 14 plays, 80 yards. Baxter bangs it in from inches out. New Mexico on top of the 17-ranked Cougars. We've got TP on the wingtips. Only Nextel digital cellular phones have direct connect. Static claim coming at you 12 o'clock. A digital two-way radio feature for instant contact. Code red, there's snow on the mouse. I repeat, snow on the mountain. Good luck, sir. Good luck, sir. Good luck, sir. So you can solve problems with the push of a button. Gentlemen, glad to meet you. At least the ones you're aware of. Nextel Direct Connect, the digital two-way radio feature that lets you get right through. This is the place where I always stop between Midway and Salt Lake, and I, I pull over here and usually have one or two cigarettes. But now that I'm not smoking anymore, it really doesn't bother me anymore. To stand here and not have a cigarette is no problem whatsoever. So far, it's been six days, and I feel great. I've had no desire to smoke, so I'm really looking forward to better health, to get rid of this cough. It's really helpful to have people say, hey, we're with you. Good luck in that. Go on, just admit it. I thought Chukarama was just a nice place to take the family. Then I started getting these cravings. My excuse is that I'd always go with my parents, but they moved to Florida five years ago. <laughs> go on, just admit it. I'm Dustin, and I'm I'm hooked on Chukarama. The choice is yours at Chukarama. Anybody want to do lunch? New Mexico came in 14 points underdog to the unbeaten Cougars who have a very impressive 5 and 0 mark and are ranked 17th in the nation and are scoring as you know 51 points a clip. This is the commissioner of the Mountain West Conference our friend the commissioner Mr. Craig Thompson alongside. Let's talk a little bit about the impressive effort of the Lobos here at home against the nationally ranked Cougars. Huh? Well I tell you what a drive you know Rocky Long always has his teams prepared ready to play and certainly to control the ball seven eight minutes like they just did there. They had the interception in the end zone. Otherwise, they perhaps could have uh, scored a second time. More with the commissioner in just a second. We'll get the kickoff underway here. The Lobos on top, 7-3. to three. Short kick at the 10-yard line. Regal, look out. He averaged over 18 and a half yards per kickoff return inside New Mexico territory. JC, let's check that scoring drive. As we take a look at, at the kickoff return, this is what New Mexico can't do. They can't give BYU any big plays, especially Regal, a guy who is very dangerous. They can't let him get outside because the guy is very quick and very elusive. When you look at that scoring drive, the impressive thing, 14 plays, 80 yards, but look at the time of possession. Six minutes and 10 seconds that they ran off that clock, and that means that the offense of BYU was on the sidelines watching for those six minutes. Line of scrimmage, the 47 of New Mexico. And they try to open it up. Stearns 
And again, Ned Stearns replaced Luke Staley. Three, Staley. Ned Stearns. Staley, their all-time on track to be their all-time leading scorer and leading ground gainer. Tonight's commissioner, Colorado State, another in the Mountain West, has an excellent chance to, uh, well, spoil the Bulldogs' record, huh? Well, I tell you, it's a big game tonight, and certainly uh, the Louisville game, their offense is sputtering a little bit, but Sonny Lubick's defense is already ready to play each and day, every day. Cougars quickly up to the line of scrimmage, second and two, spotted at the 39. Doman. Pretty good coverage by the Lobos that time. Work to number 86, one of their tight ends, Derek Shepard. Check it. That is Doug Jolly out of St. George, Utah. 6'4", the senior, 240 pounds. Craig, you've watched Luke Staley play in the Mountain West. I mean, he's versatile. He can run. He can catch. He can do it all, can't he? I tell you what, he's a very versatile player, and certainly they could use him in a number of positions as a receiver, as a running back. He's got tremendous speed and uh, probably deceptive speed when you watch him uh, initially warming up because uh, he can really turn that corner quickly. Kegler, 93, stopping Ned Stearns. Craig, the Mountain West Conference, all the teams are very, very competitive, and, and people nationally are, are really starting to take notice. A lot of lot of national exposure this year. We can be our own worst enemies sometimes, J.C., and I said that in the pregame show that, you know, any given Saturday, it's helped attendance, it's helped television ratings. People want to watch because you don't know there's no game on any given Saturday that you can go into the game saying this will be a win or this will be a loss. Double tight end set, fourth and a long one. Stearns blocking on the left side by Whitley and Reichert. This may call for a measurement. Big fourth down play for BYU. They just run the power straight ahead. Looks like they've got enough for the first down, but New Mexico defensively, they are playing extremely well right now, and they're doing what they wanted to do coming into the game, and, and that is to make BYU drive the length of the football field. Nothing Don't happened. give them any big plays over the top. Make them work for everything they get. Spotted at the 35. Doman with the audible. Again, they like to freelance. And he's got the green light. That's just a bad pass. You know, talking with the commissioner, Brandon Doman goes to Notre Dame. He was recruited by Notre Dame, by Nebraska, and by Texas A&M. Brandon's brother played on the BYU team, coached by Lavelle Edwards, that beat Notre Dame when Lou Holtz was the coach. Lou was recruiting Brandon. After his brother's team beat him, he wouldn't talk to him after the game. Advantage Mountain West. Uh, no question. And Brandon has always wanted to play for the BYU Cougars. You know, he grew up, and it's one of those family traditional things that that's where he's always dreamed to play. And he really came on at the tail end of last year and has played very well, obviously, this year to lead them to a, a national ranking. And as if on cue, Brandon keeps it himself and cracks it inside the 30. Well, Commissioner was talking about it being a family affair. He had three brothers that played for BYU that were all wide receivers. Four of his cousins were swimmers at BYU. I mean, it's in his blood. It is, you know, and, and certainly uh, Brandon is the type of kid he brings so much to this offense because uh, as they were looking at the different quarterbacks last year, they used three different starters. Brandon came in at the end and really propelled BYU and gave them a lot of uh, encouragement coming into this season. And he's such a good athlete. He can do so many things with the football big defensive series right here for the Lobos line of scrimmage the New Mexico 28 third and three showing blitz Doman all day pressure finally breaks down throwing against the grain incomplete at the two looking for or just missed and as Craig was saying that is what Doman brings to this offense Everything breaks down, and he's able to run around. He's got the ability to stay alive. You see, no one's open. The blitz is coming, and he's able to just stay alive. He's elusive, and then he almost hits Ord for a big touchdown down the field. If the wind wasn't blowing as hard as it is, that ball probably would have been complete, but that's what Doman brings to this offense. Interesting call here on fourth and three, disdaining the field goal, down by four. The 17th-ranked Cougars of BYU are going for it. Against the grain, caught, first down and more. Touchdown, BYU. 
Rod Wilkerson. A little flanker screen. His third touchdown of the year. The freshman from Orem, Utah. Good call. Great play because you don't normally see this screen run this way. They roll to the right to get the flow going, and then they throw the shoot screen back to the left. That is a, an added wrinkle that Coach Crowden has installed with this offense, and, and it worked to perfection. One of the things the Lobos fear after the catch. Bronco talked about how they make you miss. Greg Thompson, Commissioner of the Mountain West, congratulations, another great season. Good luck tonight, Colorado State against Fresno, huh? Yeah, it's going to be fun. It's good to have you on board, Jim. I hope you're enjoying Mountain West football. It's good to, good to have you back, J.C., again. Look Thanks, at this Greg. vista out here. How could you not in two teams like this, the Lobos and the Cougars? We'll be right back. Viva Las Vegas. Hi, I'm Joe Namath, honorary chairman of the 10th anniversary Sega Sports Las Vegas Bowl. Now look, after you open your presents, come join me for some great Mountain West Pac-10 football action Christmas afternoon at the Sam Boyd Stadium. It's the Sega Sports Las Vegas Bowl. Don't miss it, the Sega Sports Las Vegas Bowl. For tickets, visit tickets.com or call 888-464-2468. Polaris, it's not just a sled, it's a priority. Pay $79 per month or see your dealer for nothing down, no payments and no interest until April 2002. Cooper Tire is proud to be the official tire of the Mountain West Conference. Cooper Tires, drive on. Hey, Well, after the Lobos took that 7-3 lead, the Cougars came right back, and on a fourth and three, Wilkerson on a little flanker screen from Doman, and the Cougars are back on top. We've got 4.54 to go before Beth regales us with scores, highlights, and some great features at halftime. <laughs> Hanson watches it go right through the end zone. BYU has a lot of added wrinkles to basic plays you see they get the flow started one way and they run the shoot screen back the other way which is a great call because now there's no one in the middle of the field everyone has flowed to the right and that's what this offense does they've taken a little bit from the run and shoot a little bit from the eye back and from all these different types of offenses and then they've tried to add their own wrinkles to it Scoring drive, 331, eight plays, 47 yards, capped off by Wilkerson's 28-yard catch and run. Robbins and Wiggins in the backfield for Casey Kelly. Lobos on the short end by only three. Coming back, little hitch delay, upended near the 25-yard line. Wiggins with another catch. He came into the game with four catches, averaging about three and a half yards per. Lafitte on the stop, the senior from Peoria, Arizona. So New Mexico comes back with a little wrinkle of their own. They roll right, and then Wiggins sets up like he's going to block, and then he just comes back across the formation, and they hit him for a, a six-yard gain. Big possession right here for New Mexico. Obviously, they're down by three, but you don't want to give the ball back to the Cougars and that explosive offense and allow another score before halftime. Baxter bangs it up the middle, dives for an extra three yards with that second surge, blocking by McClure and Terrell and Sorensen up front. Air Force and Wyoming still 7-7 in the second in the Mountain West. Oh, wow. Bobby Bowden. Nebraska, 14-7. Nebraska was recruiting. Doman, Oregon leading California 7-zip in the first. Oh, my. Texas. Hook them horn. Comes back from a loss to Oklahoma last week. Oh, 
tell you that offensive line for New Mexico now is starting to play like they are in a, a meat grinder. Michigan over Purdue by 14. Thursday night game, Maryland over Georgia Tech. In case your paper wasn't delivered. And Clemson 45-37 over North Carolina State. They'll be getting snow out there in Boulder soon. Northwestern over Minnesota. And that is a final. And the Buckeyes. He never dotted the I in Swift, Ohio, did he? <laughs> Second and five from the 37. On the screen, caught by Wiggins. At midfield, inside three minutes and counting, but we talked about the importance of this possession. How big would it be if they were to go out, well, 10-10 or maybe in front? It's huge, and they come back to their little wrinkle. They set up Wiggins like he's going to pass block, and then he just leaks out to the weak side, and there's nobody over there because they're counting on the defense to flow. And you can see, he just leaks back out across the formation. There's nobody there. All he's got to do is make one guy miss, Madriata, and he could be taking it to the house. Right at midfield. First and 10 Lobos, 235 before halftime. A little draw to Wiggins. Picks up three yards. Sixth carry, 39 yards so far in the game. Having a career afternoon. And, and you see what happens. This is the same look from the defense. They're going to flow, and they're, they're seeing him roll out, but now they're conscious of Wiggins and the pass play. Now they hand it to Wiggins, and he's able to hit him up, up the middle for a five-yard game, six-yard game. Let's update that score now. Air Force has just punched it in and converted the PAT in the second. Cadets 14, Cowboys 7. Air Force is next for both of these teams. Wiggins blocking on the right side. Lensmeyer, the right tackle. Out of Frisco, Texas, 6'5 and 305. That's uh, Mrs. Lensmeyer's little boy, Jason. This offensive line, they are doing a tremendous job right now. And, and notice how many white shirts are on the ground. They pride themselves on knockdown blocks, getting guys on the ground. And Lensmeyer, the guy you just talked about, he's got 30 knockdowns on the season. Motion by Manning. Play action fake to Baxter. Kelly. Wide open and out of bounds at the 21. Otherwise, that was seven. Terrence Thomas, the sophomore, out of New Mexico, came in averaging over eight yards a catch. Are we watching the New Mexico Lobos, not the ones from a couple weeks ago that we saw against Utah? These guys have really come out to play, and they look like they are much more comfortable with this open offense. Instead of running the counter, they run the play action off of the counter action, and he throws a great ball out to Terrence Thomas, who runs the corner. From the 21, Casey Kelly. Cuts it back against the grain. One man to beat and a necktie tackle. They've got this defense on his heels right now. They don't know what's coming. Levy Madrieta out of Weisler, Idaho. Two interceptions on the season. Coming up at the end of the first half, the Discover Card Halftime Report. Beth will update you on all the scores from around the country and take a close look at Colorado State hosting 10th-ranked Fresno State tonight. And we'll also hear from head coach of the BYU Cougars, Gary Crooken. Time out on the field with 64 ticks left before Beth and halftime. We'll be right back. You have just completed the culminating training event into the United States Army. I want you to think about what it took to get here. This fire represents the soldiers who have completed basic training before you and those who are yet to come. You have what it takes to be a soldier in the greatest army of the world. Log on and find out what it feels like. Only at GoArmy.com. 
If you're watching cable, you need to change right now because A1 Satellite and the Dish Network are biting into their deals like a chicken on a June bug. I'm telling you, it's not even a close match. Here's what you get if you go with a Dish Network and A1 Satellite. You get two receivers, not one, but two receivers installed in your home at no charge, no charge to you, and 150 of America's favorite stations, all of it for $49.99 a month. We'll be out tomorrow to install it. Call a number. Helmet. Shoulder pads. Mouthpiece. Ankle brace. Now isn't the time to provide some real protection. Beneficial life. The good life. Smiles on some faces of some Lobo fans here at University Stadium. Young, old, and in between. Casey Kelly, 10 out of 14, 80 yards. And he's also carried the ball six times for 20 yards. Second and two from the 13. Lobo's looking for the go-ahead score at the very least to tie it up before intermission. Casey Kelly pulls it down, his seventh carry of the day, and it's inside the 10, spotted at the uh, seven-yard line, the tackle by number seven, Levy Madrieta. And when they run the option, you can see that there's nobody taking the quarterback, so he just turns it upfield. Defensively for BYU, they're kind of out of sync right now, and with New Mexico knowing exactly where their defense is going to line up, they're doing a great job of play calling. First and goal from the, or third and goal from the seventh. First and goal, they're wrong on the scoreboard. Baxter bangs it down near the goal line. He scored from inches away, and we've got 36 seconds before halftime. And you talk about some power. This guy's 250 pounds, and this is what you call pu a punishing running back. Watch these guys at the end. Look at Levy right there. He just bounces off of Baxter, and he's in the end zone. So Baxter knocks him about two yards back, and that's what Jared gives you, a big 250-pound bruising back. I believe Baxter will be uh, attracting a crowd the rest of the uh, time left. Ten carries, 44 yards. You've got two outstanding offensive weapons in Casey Kelly and Jared Baxter, and Coach Dodd, Dan Dodd, the offensive coordinator, was talking about the maturing of Casey Kelly over the last couple of weeks. Says he doesn't have the highs and lows of some other quarterbacks, and he learns on the practice field. He's not pouty, and he's a very coachable young man. Huh? Well, he's definitely not playing like a guy making his second start today. He's done everything right except for one errant pass. But when you're able to run the ball like the low boys are doing right now, it takes a lot of pressure off of them. How about this drive? You, you talked about how important this drive was going to be for them just in terms of keeping the ball away from BYU. They said, nah, forget that. We're going to go down. We're going to score ourselves. Coach Dodd said that young man is very even keeled. Very, very coachable. Actually reminds you a lot of what they say about Doman on the other side. I mean, both of them are mature beyond their years and very coachable young men. And that's exactly what you have to be at that quarterback position. Looking for the go-ahead score. How big would this be? Folks will be checking their ticker. Better watch Jared Baxter. Blitz coming. I said he would attract the crowd. They were playing Baxter the whole way. But now BYU is blitzing. So they've gotten away from their basic vanilla type defense they know that we've got to do some other things in order to stop this running game down to stop this running game you can see they blitz from the outside and what a great job of just giving up your body that's how you're supposed to do it big ryan denny and when you get a six seven guy diving at you like that 275 pounds man you better watch out well, Coach Dodd was pretty open with us yesterday at practice, said we're going to see some new formations that uh, BYU's never seen, some plays that they've never seen, and try to get to the edge, get to the outside. We've got the edge because we've got best. 
Well, yes, yesterday, Don was also telling us, guys, that one of his biggest concerns was what he described as those two big defensive end sons of guns coming off the edge. We just saw one of them right there, Ryan Denny. He thinks both he and Brett Kiesel can probably play in the NFL next year. Probably wishes Ryan went ahead and went a year early after that last play. But the key he was telling us was they've got to give uh, their quarterback some time to make plays, and he's been able to do that in the first half. He really challenged his offensive line, didn't he, Beth? And J.C., I mean, he said to the line, the interior five, can you execute? We'll find out right here. Third and goal from the three. Counter wide left. Kelly looks to counter the whole way. No play. Guilford was back there on the coverage. They run the fade. Casey's got to just get some more air under the ball. But give that man right there, Guilford, some credit. He plays the ball instead of the man. You can see the ball's just a little flat and underthrown. And Guilford does a good job of getting his head around and knocking the ball away. He was looking at counter the whole way. Guilford did a good job of watching Kelly's eye. Spots at the 10. And we are tied at 10. Boren Bozen. Cougars a 14-point favorite here at University Stadium. First home game for the Lobos in six weeks. New Mexico, this is the kind of a game today where they to win to turn this entire season around. Thirteen plays, 76 yards, and four minutes and 26 seconds on the clock before that 20-yard field goal to equalize for Boren Bozen and head coach Rocky Long. Well, I said that they were going to need to put some long drives together, eight, nine, ten play drives. That play, 13 plays, takes up over four minutes, and they're able to get points on the board, which is a, a plus for New Mexico. Rocky was talking about that explosive Cougar offense yesterday. Said they've got so many formations and they've got so many weapons that if you look at them on film, they'll get you back in your heels a little bit. They've got so many different types of personnel to throw at you. But he thought if they could have the good pursuit and the good angles defensively, and if they could use up some of the clock and stay in it, they had a good chance. 10-10 at halftime. In 22 seconds, they try the squib. Well, as the offense for the Cougars come on the field, let's take a look at our wide out of the week brought to you by Polaris. It's not just a sled, it's a priority, and BYU's priority is throwing. <laughs> and you can see 19 receptions, 255 yards, and three touchdowns la last week. I'll be very curious what BYU does. If they put it up, I've got to question the squib kick and giving them good field position here at the 40-yard uh, line. No question about it especially as fast as they've been able to score this season. You've got to try to back those guys up. Underneath, first down inside Lobo territory goes Halliday. I don't like the squib kick. i got to be honest. I mean, 60 yards, and they've got nine scoring drives in less than a minute. You're turning it over to a wide-open offense. You got I don't to understand try to, it. You've got to try to kick that ball deep and try to pin them down. They just took a timeout, but... You know, with 10 seconds to go, they've got time to throw the ball downfield and make a completion and, and get in the field goal range. General Motors and Gallagher. Time ticking down. Let's take a moment to thank our corporate partners, Hooper Tire. Proud to be the official tire of the Mountain West Conference. Cooper Tires, Drive On, and Worldspan, official travel distribution and technology provider of the Mountain West Conference. Well, it would be interesting if Rocky made the call on the squib kick, or if it was Jeff Conway, the special teams coach, I remember many years ago, Tony Franklin was doing the place kicking for the Philadelphia Eagles. It was a playoff game, the Eagles at Tampa Bay. Tony Franklin decided to do an outside kick and never told Vermeil. 
Vermeil about choked him to death. <laughs> and how many games did he play after that? <laughs> Probably not very many. Lobo fans get into it now with 10 seconds left before Beth Mullins and our half done. Look for BYU to, to run a deep comeback on the sideline or attack the middle of the field and try to run their field goal team on. But if they can get 20 yards on this play, which they have time to do, they're in field goal range. The New Mexico coaches are trying to get a third defensive back over to the far side of the field. There were three Cougar wide receivers and only two defenders there. But what you don't want to do is overload that trip side and leave the single receiver man to man because I guarantee you they'll take a shot with him and then obviously you can try to get a pass interference call if not a completion. But you also don't want to try to cover three BYU receivers with two defenders. Oh, no question about it. Now they put two seconds back on the clock. So here we go. From the 48, the 48 of New Mexico tied at 10. Brandon Doman. Flood left. Doman. Now that looks like intentional grounding. He just threw the ball forward to try to get the ball out of bounds so the clock would get stopped and he got caught for it. Gary Davis was in hot pursuit of number 11 Brandon Doman who that time was a little undecided what to do with it. Well he had no one downfield to throw the ball to everyone was short. Then you throw the ball out of bounds. You got to throw it away and you stop the clock. Now you're faced with intentional grounding. You can see there's nobody to throw the ball to and he's actually past the line of scrimmage right here and look at the throw right there. He just wants to try to stop the clock and just throws the ball out of bounds. Of course you can't do that though Jim. The loss of down really doesn't hurt them right now with three seconds left. They're just going to try to take a shot at the end zone. It was like a triple but call. It sounded like, yeah, sound like they there was even at the hotel buffet. <laughs> they hit him with a couple penalties. Huh? <laughs> so with three seconds left to go, you either take the knee or you throw this one all the way in the end zone. Hail Mary or hope for a penalty. Oh, there's no way you take a knee here. You take a shot. They're going to try to take a shot at the end zone. Won't get there. Incomplete, and the half will end in a 10 10 tie. David Hall from Fort Myers, the junior safety, batted it up in the air, and the crowd comes alive at University Stadium. Their Lobos were a 14 point underdog to the Cougars of BYU. A terrific first half in our Mountain West Conference Game of the Week. The Lobos looking to even their record at 3 and 3. And BYU, 17th ranked nationally, trying to bump their record up to 6 and 0. But we're tied at 10 at halftime. Every time you use your Discover card, Discover will make a donation to America's relief efforts until we reach our goal of $5 million. Just by doing what you do every day, you can help the victims and families of September 11th. To find out more, call 1-800-DISCOVER or go to discovercard.com. keep your business moving in the right direction, you need to make the best decisions about your image. Fast Signs offers sign and graphic solutions to make your choices simple. With locations coast to coast, Fast Signs is ready to keep your business moving. Fast Signs, sign and graphic solutions made simple. Call, click, or visit a Fast Signs location near you. They say it's an extreme sport, but it only begins there. It's a sport that pushes performance to the limits and beyond. That's why when conditions lean to the extreme, 
Winners stay cool with Phillips 66 Inject Two Cycle Motor Oil. It gives you maximum performance on race day and every day. To let the good times roar, choose Phillips 66 Inject for your two cycle engine. Think smart. Think performance. Think Phillips 66, the performance company. Well, I grew up in this area and I always wanted to come back to BYU and coach here. The players are well disciplined and uh, they have great work ethic. They like to serve and to help other people. I see them out all the time working at the elementary schools, working at Special Olympics. I think they are role models. They are students and, and we are trying to educate these young men in becoming very good people, not just football players. Discover card for the slightly smarter consumer. And a bit of a surprise at halftime, the 17th ranked BYU Cougars, the highest scoring team in the country, tied with New Mexico at 10 apiece. Well, we are getting down to it here in the desert on a Sunday, but very windy day in Albuquerque. Other Mountain West action going on. It's probably a little bit cooler on the front range as Wyoming takes on Air Force and the score in the second quarter, 14 to 10. Air Force with the lead over Wyoming, and as Jim Kelly has alluded to, the Falcons, the next opponent for both of these teams here today. And let's take a look now at this week's Mountain West Notes. San Diego State heading into Las Vegas for a showdown with UNLV. The season has been a rough one on UNLV as John Robinson's spot still looking for their first conference win of the season. Former Heisman hopeful Jason Thomas has had a shaky start but is determined to turn the campaign around this year. And although Thomas's performance last week was still not up to par, the win over Nevada may give the Rebels the confidence they need to overcome the ground attack of the Aztecs. But as Tez Doldner will tell you, never count the UNLV quarterback out. He is the, in my opinion, the number one impact player in the conference because he can beat you so many ways. I mean, he's a competitor, he's big, he's strong. He may be big and strong, but San Diego State's offense is another story as they have the number three rusher in the country on their side. Larry Ned set a conference record last week with 285 yards rushing. He's up to over 154 per game for San Diego State. Also tonight in prime time, it should be chilly over in Fort Collins when the Rams host 10th ranked Fresno State. The Bulldogs 5-0 on the season led by Heisman candidate David Carr, who has already passed for more than 1,400 yards on the season. Sonny Lubick's Rams, an uncharacteristic two and three thus far, but they've shown signs of life on defense in their last four games, only giving up 13 points per contest. And oh, by the way, Lubick has only lost back-to-back -back games five times during his nine-year career with Colorado State. Our score at halftime, New Mexico controlling the clock, and they are tied with 17th ranked BYU at 10 apiece. Coming up later, a look at what Coach Croton has done to make the Cougars college football's best offensive team. I think it's interesting. See if you do too. Join me in my shorts, 4.30 Saturday afternoon, repeated 11.30 Sunday evening on KJAZZ TV. This week on Talking Pictures, Porking Corky, and the Fur Flies at your video store. Join me, Tony Toscano, Talking Pictures, this Saturday night on KJAZZ TV. Can you live for today and still prepare for tomorrow? If you had the chance to make your dream come true, could you? When you look out your window, what do you wish you'd see? Seeing the possibilities is the first stage. Wells Fargo, the next stage.
No matter how busy you are, there's always time to find great values at McDonald's. Mark your calendar, because Mondays are even more special at McDonald's. That's when our classic Big Mac is only 99 cents. It's the burger you love. Great value at McDonald's. 99 cent Big Mac Mondays, every Monday. Now for your convenience, put it on the card. Our health is really our wealth. At my age, there are no bad days if you're here to see them. In Health Plan, we look for a choice of providers. I want health insurance we can depend on. I want to choose my own doctor. If it wasn't for a couple of good doctors, I probably wouldn't be talking to you. He may even come out the house to see you, the kind of doctor we're looking for. You've got to work hard all your life to make every minute count. You wanted something good looking, so you put me in front of some flowers. It's your life. It's your health. Take control. Brought to you by Discover Car for the slightly smarter consumer. Here in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and 17th ranked and unbeaten BYU tied at 10 apiece. So a lot of action elsewhere in the country. Let's get right to it. A rough day for Bobby Bowden. The nation's longest home winning streak done. Miami wins in Tallahassee, 49-27. Florida and Auburn starting later today. And Oklahoma and Kansas. OU looking to go 6-0 on the season. Nebraska up a touchdown on Baylor. Boston College and Virginia Tech later. Oregon an opportunity now to take over the nation's longest home unbeaten streak. They're up three touchdowns on Cal. UCLA pounding Washington in the second quarter. Arkansas up early on unbeaten South Carolina three zip and Texas rebounding nicely from their loss to OU today. Michigan beats Purdue 24 to 10. Maryland of course that big win in overtime on Thursday against Georgia Tech and Clemson topples NC State another high scoring affair for the Tigers. Colorado up on Texas A&M also in the Big 12 Kansas State and Texas Tech coming up later as well as that battle of unbeatens out in the Pac-10 between Washington State and Stanford back to the uh, Big Ten Northwestern rallying after their loss to Ohio State last week. The Buckeyes up on Wisconsin in the second and Syracuse pounding Pittsburgh today 42 to 10 the final from the Big East Conference. Halftime in Albuquerque as the wind continues to pick up could be tough on the passing attacks in the second half. We're tied at 10. As halftime rolls on, a closer look at the Cougars' prolific offense. Nobody beats R.C. Willie. It's AT&T's Watch and Win. Look for the secret word phrase during each quarter of the Utes game on KJAZZ TV. Winning has never been easier. You can log on to utahutes.com or fax your entry into KJAZZ or just mail in your name, address, and phone number. You could win tickets to U of U events, U of U apparel, or a trip for two to Mexico from Good Times Travel. And just for entering, you'll receive a free ticket to a U of U sporting event. Everyone's a winner with AT&T Wireless and U of U Sports. For selection, savings, service, and satisfaction, look to Wet Gundy Ford and Layton. New or used car or truck, our $10 million inventory guarantees you'll find the vehicle you're looking for. Past credit problems are no problem at the Ed Gunley Car Bar. And our service commitment includes Saturday hours for our parts department and quality quick lane service with no appointment necessary six days a week. We've been serving your automotive needs for 20 years, and your satisfaction is still our number one concern at Ed Gunley Ford, where you still have a say in the price you pay. I'm Ned Siegfried. Many people mistakenly believe if they pursue an insurance claim, they will wind up in a court battle. 
The truth is, we resolve almost all claims without going to court. We have negotiated thousands of settlements for thousands of clients over the past 15 years. We know clients want both a good result and a timely result. Call us at Siegfried & Jensen. Let us help you get the settlement you deserve on a timely basis. Call today. Welcome to today's Halftime Report, brought to you by Discover Card for the slightly smarter consumer. Our score at halftime, BYU and New Mexico tied at 10 apiece. Well, when Gary Croton took over as the 13th head coach at BYU, taking over for Lavelle Edwards, few people thought that BYU could get off to the start that they have gotten off to this year, 5-0. But one who did believe was the new head coach himself, Gary Croton. I'd like to introduce to you Gary Croton, BYU's new head football coach. When he was hired for the job, Croton said, quote, to be able to follow in the footsteps of a legend like Lavelle Edwards is both incredibly humbling and challenging. I pledge to BYU fans that I will devote my energy to continuing BYU's winning football tradition. For nearly three decades, the legendary Edwards graced the sidelines at the helm of the BYU Cougars. With all his wisdom and experience, it was unlikely that anyone would follow in his footsteps and bring excitement back to Provo so quickly. He left a great legacy there for, you know, there'll be nobody that can, in the history of that university, they'll be able to accomplish what he's accomplished. Edwards started coaching in Provo in 1972, eventually becoming the sixth all-time winningest football coach in college history. He led BYU to a national championship in 1984 and helped rewrite NCAA record books with the 1990 Cougar team, anchored by Heisman Trophy winner Ty Detmer. But even as prolific as that offense was, the 2001 edition of the Cougars is one of the most wide open in history. Well, in the past, BYU, when, when things get tight, they've usually closed down and, and become, had more tighter formations, and, and I think it might just be the opposite. I think it might, we might spread it out and widen it out a little bit more. And they have. Comparing this year's Cougars to the 90 team, at their current pace, the 2001 squad is ahead in every major statistical category except for passing yards. Their 51 points per game ranked them number one in the country. BYU has scored an outstanding 255 points through five contests. They're second in the nation in total offense with just over 566 yards per game, fifth in pass offense at 313 yards, and fifth in rushing offense at 253 yards a game. And their 5-0 start is the best at BYU since the 84 championship team started 5-0. Not only are the team stats off the charts, but individually the Cougars are setting trends in the Mountain West and on the national scene. So what makes Croton, the Utah native who played football at opposing Colorado State, so special? He's a real hands-on coach, he's real physical, uh, and he'll get out there and he, he'll, he'll run some routes with you. You know, and it's kind of a little different from Lavelle style, and you know, hopefully both of them work, so. Well, from day one, Croton promised to continue the winning tradition that Edwards worked so hard to establish. And although it's a new BYU team, there will always be a little old school. I'm excited just to have the opportunity to, to be in Provo and, and be around BYU, which I, I grew up in this area. And, uh, you know, just can't hardly wait. And Croton maintains a conservative confidence about his BYU offense. Ten points on the board in the first half without the services today of All-America candidate Luke Staley. Halftime in Albuquerque. We're all even. Jim and JC will be back for the second half when we come back in a moment. choice hotels in the U.S. and the Caribbean. Just want to thank everyone for traveling again and getting back to experiencing the power of being there.
Every time you use your Discover card, Discover will make a donation to America's relief efforts until we reach our goal of $5 million. Just by doing what you do every day, you can help the victims and families of September 11th. To find out more, call 1-800-DISCOVER or go to discovercard.com. Welcome back. We'll take a look at our Discover first half highlights. The first one is a low light for Luke Staley, huh? The BYU offense was struggling, and meanwhile, Casey Kelly, pretty impressive in the first half. Baxter banged it over right there for his seventh rushing touchdown of the year, and that put New Mexico on top by a score of 7-3. to three. And then Doman, his 14th scoring strike, Wilkerson, the freshman, his third touchdown on the year. That put it 10 to 7 in favor of BYU. Lauren Bozen tied it up with a 20 yard field goal. And that's where we are right now at halftime. 10 10, the Lobos, a two touchdown underdog to the BYU Cougars. Welcome back, everybody. Our Karnak here, J.C. Pearson, will put things into perspective. I tell you, this first half, University of New Mexico, I mean, who would have thought that they would have outgained BYU in total yardage and then time of possession, something that was so important to them, critical. They, they win the time of possession battle by nine minutes, which is, which is tremendous, and they were able to do that by mixing up their plays offensively. They were going to come in and mix it up, new formations, new plays, different personnel, and they did a tremendous job of that. And the quarterback, Casey Kelly, they needed him to step up and play like a big-time player, and so far he's done that. It's not just in terms of time of possession. They've got almost twice as many first downs, almost as many passing yards. Now, what about the absence of Luke Staley, the announcement that uh, if you missed it now, again, it's an eligibility issue based on transferring from one class to another and credits that they will have to sort out. But I think wisdom, rather than have him play today, let's just make sure everything is okay. But it's hurting him, that's for sure. Luke Staley was such a big part of this offense. He really was the main key because now they don't have a running game. And without a running game for BYU, that's what really opened up the passing attack for him. Now New Mexico can just focus on the pass because they want BYU to run because they don't think they can hurt them running the ball now without Luke. So it'll be up to the offense of BYU and the innovative scheme of the head coach, Gary Croton, to see if he can find some of those teams. They were pretty optimistic. They thought there were some cracks in Bronco Mendenhall's defense, and they thought they'd be able to hit the seams as you look at the stats of the first half. But, of course, that was all when they thought they were going to have Luke there and the things that he brings to this offense. But you can see 62 yards rushing for BYU. Who would have thought that New Mexico would have 217 yards in the first half and BYU would only have 160? And only 18 fewer yards passing. So Casey Kelly doing a good job. Doman with 98 yards and that one scoring strike of some 28 yards to the freshman Rod Wilkerson. There is Kelly who just gets better every game. BYU's defense thought they could tee off on him a little bit, take advantage of the fact he'd only started a game and a half. He looks like a seasoned veteran. And that's why he's in there. The offensive coordinator, Dan Dodd, said that's really what they liked about him. He doesn't rattle. He's got a lot of confidence. And regardless of what happens, he's going to stay in there and do his very best and continue to get better. So we are tied 10-10 at halftime. Leading rushers, Stearns, 10 carries, 51 yards for the Cougars. And Wiggins, he has been a human bowling ball. Seven carries, 47 yards. You have to gang tackle him to bring him down. Luke see. Staley, excuse me, JC, had more touchdowns coming into this game this season than the entire New Mexico offense. That's how much they're missing that man right there. And that 8.9 yard per carry average was huge. And that really allowed this BYU offense to open up so much because everyone had to focus on stopping the run. Now, New Mexico doesn't have to do that quite as much. A bad kick. This one goes out of bounds and a little pushing and shoving down inside the 20 is in a 10-10 tie with the fifth rank or the 5-0 uh, and o Cougars locked up in this battle against the Lobos. A little motion on that kickoff on both sides of the ball. 
Kickoff out of bounds on the kicking team. Ball will be placed on the 35-yard line. First down. And the quarterback comparison in the first half. Kelly, 10 out of 15 and one interception. Doman, the one touchdown toss, 7 out of 16 as Kelly starts from his own 35. Flood to the right. Manning is open. Kelly dumps it off and misfires for Wiggins out of the backfield. And they come out and pick up right where they left off, trying to spread this BYU defense out and trying to get some people running open. You can see Casey does a good job of stepping up. He's got Wiggins wide open. He just sails the ball over his head. But if Wiggins is able to catch that ball, he's got a big game. Another thing that Dan Dodd was going to do with Casey Kelly was change the rhythm, change the cadence of the count, try to throw BYU off a little bit as much as they could. From the 35 on second and 10, Wiggins, nothing doing. And all season long, the defense for BYU has started slowly, just like they did today, but they've always gotten stronger. As the game goes on, those guys continue to push harder and harder and, and really start to dominate the second half. We'll see if they're able to do that today. Three out of seven on third down conversions for the Lobos that also had to make an adjustment as far as Casey Kelly and the drop point. Offensive line had to make an adjustment. Ideally for Casey Kelly, the coaches were saying what, about seven and a half yards? And it was so big for the offensive lineman. Could be a pass interference, but it looks like he's not going to get a call. But it was it's so big for the offensive lineman to know that he's going to be in the same place, whether he's in the shotgun or dropping back so they can protect him. Manning looping out of the backfield but Brandon Heaney number 34 out of California the sophomore was he on him and you can see there was a hold early and then it looks like he may have hit him just a little bit too early but obviously not because the referees didn't call it that doesn't mean obviously not <laughs> yes it does because as a former <laughs> defensive back if they don't call it that means it didn't happen that was a penalty <laughs> born in Bozen it. hangs it high Regal great pursuit specialty teams and a flag comes in maybe a face mask Derek Shepard was down there now that's a penalty <laughs> when you see the flag go down that means it's a penalty Forty seven yards on the punt and a minus six on the return and here's the call. During the run back face mask on the defense 15 yard penalty first down. Jack Wood the referee today another look here's Raguel. You see at the end of the play right there that left hand looks like that he just got that left hand on the face mask. You, that's a great look at it right there. No question about that call. That is a penalty, Jim. There is no ifs, ands, buts about it. I'll go back to our Elvis machine and show you the pass interference on the defensive back from the previous set. Doman from his own 27. Up near the 40, Ned Stearns. David Hall was back there on the coverage, the uh, junior out of Fort Myers, Florida. The first series out after halftime is, is so important because it sets the tempo for the rest of the second half. You can see BYU, they come out and do what they do. They try to spread you out also, and they hit Stearns out of the backfield. But this first drive is so critical, both for the defense of New Mexico and the offense of BYU. First and 10 from the 39. Doman. Wide open. It's the catch and run that they're afraid of. They said they make you miss. Perfect example right there. Got another five yards. Mahe did all on his own. The junior out of Salt Lake City who came into the game with averaging about 11 and a half yards a catch. 
And when they catch the ball, you got to come up and you got to make the tackle. Mahe is an elusive guy, a quick guy. You got to get on him because if you get him in the open field, he's he's a return man now, and he's going to make some guys miss. And that's where their big plays come from. When you guys, when their guys are able to get in the open field and make you miss. Doman starting to get on track early now here in the second half. Nine out of 18, 127 yards. Flares it out, misfires. Down on the sidelines. Beth? Well, I just wanted to give you an update on the wind conditions. It continues to pick up, and right now it is blowing right into the BYU offense's face. It's pretty stiff down here for him to throw into. Jim? We knew it was. We saw your new hairdo at halftime. <laughs> yeah. Second and 10 from the 46. 13.08 to go. That's just a terrible pass and Doman knew it matted himself Ord was wide open and a penalty flag down at the 47 yard line. Doman made his first start ironically against the Lobos a year ago threw for 349 yards and ran for another 54. And I think they're going to get Dustin Riker downfield he's blocking downfield on the cornerback. That's what it was, an illegal man downfield. Ineligible receiver downfield, offense. Five yard penalty, stays second down. The former quarterback from Orem, Utah, played high school quarterback. Coach Croton did, then played quarterback at Snow College. Colorado State finished up as a defensive back. For ineligible receiver downfield on the offense will be declined by the defense. Third down. And that's a good call by New Mexico. Instead of backing him up five yards and giving him two more downs, don't decline it, and now it's third down and long. You know how you can tell you've got a 10-10 game? Nobody's sitting down on either bench. Both sides are up. Third and ten from the 46. Penalty flag is down. This one will be coming back regardless. Thrown in the direction they usually call offensive holding. Wilkerson, who's got the touchdown catch, and Persley, who we knew was going to have a busy afternoon and had to come up with a big game, was there on the cover. And this is going to be holding on BYU, which again, decline it. And now it's fourth down. Make them punt the ball. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. You're going to see the left part of your screen, number 54. See, gets caught on the blitz, and he just tackles the guy right there. You're going to get caught every time for that, but that's what this blitz package does for you also. It gets those linemen to overcommit one way, brings another guy through there, and sometimes the only way to pick it up is to hold him. Aaron Edmonds had only 14 punts on the year coming into this game. This is his third this afternoon. Wiggins will watch this one sail to the far sideline. Gets a New Mexico bounce. They lost seven on the first bounce. 1250 to go in the third. We're live in New Mexico. The Lobos locked up in a good one up against the 17th ranked Cougars of BYU. Resistance becomes strength, becomes power. The power to change and reshape your entire body. This is Bowflex, an entire gym and one easy to use machine. So powerful, it delivers over 60 health club quality exercises with up to 410 pounds of resistance in any room in your home. Strength training with Bowflex is so effective that we guarantee you'll get the results you want in six weeks or less. One simple workout. 20 minutes a day, three days a week. Bowflex is real. The results are real. And you can own one with no money down and payments as low as $33 per month. 
Call right now for a free video and brochure. Bowflex, the power is yours. Chuck, it's Rennie. I'm stuck. Call me back. Rennie, we're doing shadow puppets. Call me. Chuck. Rennie. Call me back. You, you just, just left me a message. message. I'm not, not going to touch, touch my phone. phone. Call, Call me. me. Tired of phone tag? Get Nextel Direct Connect, the digital two-way radio feature that lets you get right through. So instead of reaching Chuck's voicemail, you can actually reach Chuck. Welcome back to our Mountain West Conference Game of the Week. A dandy, the Cougars unbeaten, but for how long? Lobos looking for a huge upset at home. First home game in six weeks. Baxter in the backfield, number 28. He's got the lone New Mexico touchdown. Motion by Manning. Almost a missed handoff and a loss on the play of almost five yards. BYU has seen this play enough. Justin Inna, the inside linebacker, he sees it and he comes forward. The first half, he was just waiting on that play. Obviously, they went in and talked about it at halftime. Now he's attacking it and is able to come through there and make a tackle for a loss. Second and 14. Somebody forgot to tell Casey Kelly he was supposed to work on the clock. Wiggins. And this is one of the things the New Mexico offensive coaches were concerned about. The front four of the Cougars wearing them down and the linebackers just getting stronger as the game goes on. And that's exactly what's happening. They run the option that they had a lot of success with the first half. This time they run it and Isaac Kelly is in perfect position. This defense is going to continue to come at you, come at you. They're big, they're strong, they're physical. And for some reason they seem to get stronger as the game goes on. Dan Dodd told us that they were going to let the ball and the clock go down to about four seconds, three seconds before they snap the ball. On third and 18. Screen. And a late flag thrown by the umpire in the direction of Wiggins. It's usually going to be a hold. Illegal receiver downfield against the Lobos. So with 11 18 to go. Ineligible receiver downfield. Offense. Penalty will be declined. Fourth down. Jack Wood getting as much time as Beth Mullen today. <laughs> and New Mexico gets called for an ineligible receiver downfield on the screen, just like BYU did in their series. Airtime. He'll have to join after. <laughs> Regal is back deep and the Cougars should come out of this with excellent field position. Warren Bozen. Got all of this one. A little bit of a seam and then a lot of red jerseys upended near the 39 yard line by Javier Henson out of Inglewood California. 11 06 to go in the third our Mountain West Conference game of the week. the Finch. Get me a meeting today if possible. That's not my job. What is your job? No one knows. <laughs> Just shoot me five times a week. Weeknights at 6.30 and 10. Access Hollywood. Access Hollywood takes you behind the scene. Movie TV. We are your entertainment team. So there, so there you, have you have it. Access Hollywood. We are where you need to be. Weeknights at 9 on KJAZZ TV. 
Your Ford stores want to drive America with absolutely no interest loans on Ford cars, trucks, and SUVs. For the first time ever, pay no interest for the life of your loan on Ford vehicles. That's interest-free financing on cars like Focus and Taurus, trucks like Ranger and F-Series, and no interest on Ford SUVs. Interest-free financing from your heart of the West Ford stores to help drive America. Beth Moen down on the sideline working the benches as only Beth Moen can. J.C. Pearson's alongside. We're glad you're on board for our Mountain West Conference Game of the Week. The Cougars 10, the Lobos 10. 11.06 to go in the third. Line of scrimmage, the 39 of BYU. They came in 5-0 and and ranked 17th in the nation, averaging 51 points per game. So far, they've scored 10. Stearns with a little dance and stutter step moves up near the 44 yard line in the grasp of David Hall. Let's take a look now at the Choice Hotels International Game Summary. Ned Stearns of BYU, 10 rushes, 51 yards. He's the guy that took Luke Staley's place. But look at the time of possession. New Mexico, 22 minutes and three seconds. BYU, under 12 minutes. That has been the key to this ball game so far. Doman pitches back to Stearns. Oh, what a block by Ben Archibald. 65 just blew his man backwards about six yards. Kevin Walton came up. Lobo. And that's a position, not a nickname. And that was Scott Gerhardt that we're going to take a look at that gets blasted right outside, <laughs> right there, and allows Stearns to get outside. We want to make sure that they contain it, keep containment for Stearns to turn that up, that ball back up inside. Stearns is the tailback. Again, Luke Staley is out if you've joined us late. Stearns with a carry, hammered at midfield, but should be very close to first down yardage in the grasp of Daniel Kegler out of frost-proof Florida. Is that not the best hometown you could name? <laughs> and there's Luke Staley, I'm sure. Really upset that he's not out there helping his teammates right now because he, with him, he can, they can do, and he can do so many more things offensively. Stearns picked up the first down and gets his third consecutive carry. And what a hit at the 45 of New Mexico by Scott Gerhardt. Turnaround is fair play. He got it on the previous play. Comes back and does a little hitting of his own. Got to give it back to somebody. But look how, how tentative Stearns is right, right there. He's got to hit that ball, find a crease, and get going. That's what Luke Staley is so good at. He finds a crease, and then he explodes through, through that crease. Suck his dick. Second and five. Stearns, 14 carries, 67 yards. 15 carries. And tack on two more. And with the wind being as bad it, as it is for BYU right now, they've gone away from the pass and is trying to focus on getting this running game established. You see how close to the line of scrimmage the Cougars huddle? They're only two or three yards away. They put in a brand new set of terms and nomenclature, as the coaches like to call it. They're not worried about the defense picking it up. They said, heck, it took our kids half a year to learn it themselves. Lobos deny the Cougars and look at the pursuit. First to get there, Gary Davis. The guy that makes the play is the cornerback, David Crockett. Watch how he comes up and takes on the lineman right there, forces Stearns to bubble deep. That allows the rest of his guys in pursuit to get there. And look, there's about seven red jerseys around him. That's the way they want to play football. They have to pursue to the ball not just count on one man making the tackle. How about this on fourth and five, 8.15 and counting, left to go in the third, and they're going for it on fourth down. They come back the other way, Andrew Ord will not get the first down, and New Mexico comes out with great field position. Nick Spiegel on the stop, 6'5", 235, the freshman, number 89. They just try to come back to that shoot screen. 
They know that they've got single coverage up top with Persley, and he does a great job of coming down. If you'll take a look at it, they fake the toss and run that shoe screen, but, but watch what Persley is. Does a great job, and there's Spiegel. That pursuit that New Mexico was talking about all night last night and today, they had to get those guys pursuing. Great job of tackling. Lobos come out from the sideline already calling the play. Motion by Hanson. Kelly. For all of it, picked off at the 15-yard line by Gennard Guilford. Guilford looks for a seam. Hammered at the 37-yard line. That's the third interception on the year for the 6-1 sophomore out of Hawthorne, California. Second pick of the afternoon thrown by Casey Kelly, his third of the year. 21 yards after the INT. The counter's got to find a way to knock that ball down. But give Gennaro Guilford a lot of credit for playing the football. Last week he had a big 62-yard interception for a touchdown that sparked BYU against Utah State and we'll see if he's able to do that again today not able to take advantage of the good field position one and out Doman to air it out from his own 37 pulls it down looks for a couple of his big horses wrestled down at the 38 yard line by David Hall Doman wanted the face mask and will not get the call that's good pursuit by this New Mexico defense. These guys are playing extremely hard today. There's no give up in these guys whatsoever. Great coverage downfield, and now Doman's just trying to make something happen, but there's nowhere to go. He's shaking guys all over, but you can see Hall does a great job of pursuing it. And this crowd, they really need to get this crowd involved because it can really hinder the audibles that we see Doman trying to do right now. From the shotgun on second and eight. First down at the 48 and then drop. Incomplete pass. Pass is incomplete. It was intended for number 85. Looking for Justin Anderson out of Orem, Utah. I tell you, New Mexico is hyped up right now. Great coverage by Childress. Look how he gets his right hand in there and then gets the ball out, strips the ball out. That is excellent coverage by that young man. And then Doman gets popped again. Hey, that was pretty close up the reception. His knee was very close to being down when he had possession. No, that ball was out. Great job by the defensive back. Children oh. ripping that ball out of there. He'd be a great lobbyist in Washington if there was a defensive back. Third and eight from the 39. All day, Doman incomplete at the 45. Looking for Mahe coming out of the backfield. No flags. And not a good throw by Doman. They give him a lot of time, and he told Mahe at the end of that play to keep running. You can see Doman has a lot of time, and Mahe, it's just not a good throw. If Doman gets that ball up, Mahe catches that. Going into the wind, it's tough to throw the ball into the wind. Four punts this afternoon after playing five games and only punting the football 14 times. Lobos jumped offside. So Edmonds, who's getting a workout, will have another opportunity. This play was dead before the snap. These flags don't mean a thing. except for the two players that have some severe headaches. And he got the worst for that, Wilkerson did. But when you're running down there, you've got to be aware of where the return man is and give him room. Wilkerson also has the 28-yard scoring strike for the only touchdown for the Cougars. This is an amazing defensive effort by the Lobos. I mean, the lowest point total so far, 35 points against UNLV, and in that game, the Cougars popped the ball up four times. Offside, defense. 
Interference with the opportunity to catch the kick on the kicking team. By rule, those penalties will offset. We will replay fourth down. So they're going to have to kick it again. But Rocky Long said his guys weren't intimidated. They had a lot of confidence, and when you're coming into a big game like this, you don't want to get scared now. It's time to go out and play. Just to get back to that offensive uh, explosiveness of BYU, how about 70 points against Tulane, 52 against Nevada? You can see Wilkerson's just running downfield looking at the return man. He's got to find the ball, and I guarantee you from now on he's going to do that because he got the worst of that collision. So Edmonds will kick it away. Wiggins is back deep again. And this one is terrible. Out of bounds at the 45 of New Mexico. The line of scrimmage was the 39 of the Cougars. 10-10 and our old friend momentum on the side of the Lobos. Dear sir. Thank you for changing my son's life. He has said that if he makes it through basic training, he'll never be afraid of anything. In my proudest moment, I will watch my son march across that field with his head held high. Thank you for bringing out the best in my child. Graduation is just the beginning. Log on only at GoArmy.com. tire of the Mountain West Conference. Cooper Tires, drive on. Does your dream home have a mountain view or a lake view? Will your child follow in your footsteps or find her own way? How far can you go on your own? Dreaming is the first stage. Wells Fargo, the next stage. 6.31 to go in the third. BYU 10, New Mexico 10. A dandy here in our Mountain West Conference Game of the Week. Baxter in there at the lone running back spot. Dwight counter, wide to the left. Casey Kelly. In there, a quarterback now has thrown two picks so far. Just gets it to counter. Across midfield. Guilford chased him out. Seventeen ten. Air Force on top over the Cowboys in the third. Florida State a disaster against Miami. Nebraska running it up against Baylor. Of course, Baylor eked out at overtime win against New Mexico earlier in the year. Oregon hounding California. Yes, the Bruins, JC. <laughs> Over my Huskies at halftime. Second and five. Six. Out of bounds near the 43 yard line. You get the feeling that Casey Kelly and Dwight Conner can do this all day long. Arkansas by a field goal against Lou Holtz in South Carolina. Texas, Hook'em Horns, the 11th ranked. At Ann Arbor, no problem. And Clemson running up. Conner now four catches and 28 yards. Aggies locked up in a 14-14 top. They spotted it at the 44, not the 43. Manning. Wiggins with a block. One man to beat, and he slips at the 41. Here by number 24, Joel Manning. It's going to be real important for New Mexico 18, to get Michael. something out of this drive. They had great field position. They're going with the wind. There's only six minutes left in this quarter. The fourth quarter, BYU is going to be with the win and that throwing attack. So New Mexico's got to get some points on the board. Okay. 
Dan Dodd on the headset sitting down. Bronco Mendenhall standing up while his defense gets a rest. Second and six. Kelly pulls it back in, almost the errant snap. Misfires, thought his receiver Wiggins was going to turn it upfield. Well, the next quarterback, Gary Croton, right there <laughs> with the completion. That won't show up in the stats. <laughs> and he, he doesn't look like a happy camper. <laughs> you can see the ball just overthrown, but there's the good hand coach right there, right on the spot. Now he just wishes that his wide receivers can catch some passes like that. Kelly, 11 of 21, 87 yards. Faced with third and six from just outside the 40. This is a big play for New Mexico. Kelly with the audible. Blood to the right. Manning and Wiggins left. Manning! Inside the 10. Out of Lancaster, California in the grasp of Brandon Heaney. Oh, man. What about that throw? Casey Kelly throws a bullet right to Manning, the fastest guy on the team. He just runs the slant from the slot. And I mean, Casey Kelly put some heat on that ball right on the money. And you can see how fast Manning is. Just one more block, and he's taking it to the house. You can see he's averaging 20 yards a catch. Big play guy. Came into the game, nine receptions in five games. Has nine so far today. Tripped up from behind the line of scrimmage. Excellent defensive play. Derek Shepard tripped up. See, Dustin Staley's just going to come and just lay out and get a hand right there, right on his ankle. If he doesn't do that, they've got another big play. New Mexico, again, doing a good job of mixing up their plays. They're going to run it inside. They're going to try to attack you on the edge. Then they're going to throw the, the quick three-step drop series in the passing game. Baxter is the only running back. Look out. Second and goal from the nine. Motion by Shepard. They try to cross him up. Baxter gets it down to about the six-yard line. Inside of four minutes when the next play is snapped. Six one two fifty behind Sorensen McClure Claude Terrell and strong. You can, you got to like the way he's wrapping up that football and you see nothing but shoulder pads and knees coming at you. When you've got a big guy like that he's tough to bring down. Time out on the field, 348 to go in the third. The Lobos, a dandy at home, 10-10. They were a two-touchdown underdog to BYU. Those Cougars came in ranked 17th in the nation. Like Rocky was saying, these guys, they're not intimidated. They knew all about BYU coming in. They knew what they were facing, but they, they took the attitude that those guys put their cleats on just like we do, and we're going to go out and we're going to play tough and give those guys a lot of credit. They they have come out and they have played probably as good as I've seen them play. Rocky Long was born in Provo when his dad Rod was playing football at BYU. Learned a lot from his dad, but one of the lessons he told us a couple of weeks ago that has stuck with him. If you're not happy doing what you're doing, where you're doing it, move on. He's been here four years. Two and three coming in, one and one in the conference. Put together a good coaching staff with Dan Dodd, Bronco Mendenhall. And I think some of the local writers here have been a little tough on the whole coaching staff and the kid. No question about it. If they can get a win today, it would be huge for their program, the kids' confidence, the coaches' confidence, and the fans. How can you talk about an offense that we're seeing here this afternoon and saying no imagination and no focus? You can't. Third and six. Motion by counter. Kelly pulls it down, thought about pitching it back to Wiggins, and they will call on Mr. Reliable, you would assume. And probably should have pitched that ball 
And that's what they're talking about right now with Wiggins. He's saying, hey, give me the ball, man. Just pitch it out there. I had some space. This is just a chip shot for number 14, their senior place kicker, Boren Bozen, out of Hollywood, Florida. And this is to take the lead. A 23 yarder is perfect. His dad, Milan, is from Yugoslavia. His mom, Rodika, is from Romania. And the first lead of the football game here in the second half for anybody. Lobos go up by a field goal. Time now for a look at our Army of One brought to you by the United States Army, one of the best teams in BYU history, led by Ty Detmer back in 1990. The Cougars were 10 and 3 that year. Detmer won BYU's Heisman Trophy that year. Of course, he is now being chased around by some big thugs in the NFL, isn't he? He's with the Detroit Lions. Denver is one of those guys, just like Doug Flutie, that they didn't think had the size to play in the NFL, and both Flutie and Ty proven them wrong. Robbie Bosco. Of course, Robbie Bosco is now the uh, quarterback coach. He was the uh, quarterback of the national championship team back in 84. When BYU went 13 and 0 to lead the USA, he was third in passing that year. Played a couple of years in the NFL. He is now the quarterback coach for Brandon Doman. The Cougars were 13 and 0. This is the eighth career start for Brandon Doman, trying to become the first since Robbie in '84 to go 8 and 0 as a starter. <laughs> Lots of red and very effective in the red zone. When you get there, you've got to take advantage of it. Get some points on the board. They're three of three today. Two field goals and a touchdown. They'll take that any week because they've been struggling in the red zone and against BYU. Any points on the board are good points. I'm not sure when the Cougars got off the plane yesterday, they thought with three minutes to go in the third, they'd be behind 13 to 10. Halliday, Mahe in there. As Doman operates with the lone running back, Ned Stearns. And the audible. Late pitch, Stearns. Pretty good block on the corner by Andrew Ord. Stephen Persley came up from his cornerback spot. New Mexico again with that great pursuit. But you see, Luke Staley has much more explosion and burst than Stearns does. And New Mexico is able to force him wide. Dan Kegler, number 93, the, the end just forces him, forces him, and keep forcing him to the sidelines. He just doesn't have the speed to get around the corner. Stearns, 17 carries, 69 yards. Spotted at the 22 at second and eight. Doman loops it. Mahe. These Lobos are not playing defensively like a team that's two and three. Not at all. These guys are playing hard. Gerhardt does a good job of tackling Mahe, and that's not his guy. He's got to come from a long way because they blitzed the corner, so he's coming from the safety spot and does a good job. He injures his shoulder, but you're not going to keep these guys down today. They are hyped up and they are ready to go, and I mean, they are playing a tremendous defensive ball game. Two out of ten on third down conversions. Doman with the audible again on third and five. Let's Blitz again. coming. Almost the one-handed catch by the native of Salt Lake, number 20, Reno Mahe, and David Hall was there in the coverage. Mahe, their leading receiver. Guy that's not real fast, but he's quick and elusive, and he should have made that catch. You've got to lay out, especially in the situation you're in a tight ball game like they are right now. Somebody's got to step up and make some plays. Anytime that ball is anywhere near you, you've got to do whatever you can to make that catch. Four punts, averaging 29 yards this afternoon. Edmonds is well shy of his average of 43.6. His last one went 15 yards. That'll bring your average down. 
Pretty good surge up near the 43 yard line goes Holman Wiggins out of Los Angeles, California. 127 left to go in the third. The maturing of Casey Kelly. A couple weeks ago, New Mexico at Utah. Rudy Camano got the start, ineffective. Casey finally inserted, got his chance, and has made the most of it, huh? That's an understatement. How can you, I mean, this guy, what else can he do? They wanted him to step up and play like a big time player. That's exactly what he's done today. He's got a couple interceptions, but outside of that, this guy has done a tremendous job of running this offense. Baxter. Had his seventh rushing touchdown earlier in the game from about a foot out. Not much doing over the middle. You know, defensively, BYU has not played that badly. It's been the offense that's let them down. Defensively, as we said earlier, they seem to get stronger as the game goes on. And they've done pretty well. They've got some big, strong guys up there. Their linebackers are huge. In us, 261, walking horse, 255. So they've got some big guys on this defense, and they, they try to wear you down. Line of scrimmage, the 43, it's second and nine. He threw that one into double coverage, and of course, our defensive back alongside J.C. Pearson throws his handkerchief out there. You wanted the flag. Wiggins was the intended receiver. Bachwolf was back there on the coverage out of Sunset, Vermont. Now it looks like he was on him a little early. We're going to see right here. He's got his arm all over him. That's good coverage. Were you a whiner <laughs> when you played? And I tell you, like I said earlier, if they don't call it, that means it was good. But now I'm going to be Jim Kelly. That was a penalty. That was good defensive coverage. <laughs> little roll reversal four out of 11 on third down conversion first down at the 47 yard line Dwight counter and a flag to be checked out at the 37 we might have offensive pass interference we might have got a push off downfield by counter I think counter pushed Guilford Guilford number four. Jack Wood. It was Guilford who was pushed by counter. Pass interference. Penalties hurting the Lobos all year. And that's a big one, Jim, because not only does it take away the first down, it pushes them back 15 additional yards and takes the field position away. Now the field position starts to change back again and starts to even out, especially if they can hold them here on third down and force them to punt. Third and 24. Now you don't want to throw the interception. Now you might just run it and take your licks. They'll keep it on the ground to Wigan near the 33 and work on the clock and that'll be the last snap of quarter number three. The Cougars came in fifth five and oh ranked 17th in the country but now they find themselves trailing by three. It's the fastest growing sport in the country. A sport defined by performance, determination, and teamwork. The pros know when conditions lean to the extreme, you got to go with the performer. And the 66 team is driven to perform. To protect your engine start to finish, drive with Phillips 66 Trop Arctic Premium Quality Motor Oil. Think smart. Think performance. Think Phillips 66, the performance company. Financial Institution is the leader in construction loans in Utah Valley. It's the local bank with branches from Sandy to St. George. The bank with lifetime free checking. The bank that is second to none in long-term mortgages and refinancing provided by the friendliest, most knowledgeable professionals in the state. That's right. The answer is Far West Bank. For all your construction and mortgage loan needs, Far West Bank is everything your bank should be. Far West Bank is what your bank should be. 
This is the place where I always stop between Midway and Salt Lake, and I, I pull over here and usually have one or two cigarettes. But now that I'm not smoking anymore, it really doesn't bother me anymore. To stand here and not have a cigarette is no problem whatsoever. So far, it's been six days, and I feel great. I've had no desire to smoke, so I'm really looking forward to better health, to get rid of this cough. It's really helpful to have people say, hey, we're with you. Good luck in that. We'd better check the oil, Dino. Come on, Josh, we're late. OK, you'd better do it, Dino. I can do that. Ah, just fine. Of course, I don't worry much, because I always fill up with quality Sinclair gasoline with SG2000 that keeps my engine running clean and smooth. Take it from Dino. Sinclair with SG2000 is simply unbeatable. Hey, Dino, where'd you get those sunglasses? Welcome back to New Mexico. Jack Wood and his officiating crew were very, very late to notice that the Cougars and the Lobos had not indeed ended the third quarter. New Mexico, rightly so, J.C. Person, wants the wind at their back to punt it away. Smart call by Rocky Long. Now they're punting with the wind. They get a chance to back BYU up deep in their own territory. If they let the clock run out, now they're going to punt into the wind. Great call by New Mexico. Regal standing back at his own 22. And this one and is airborne. And a huge pile up at the 20 yard line. Cougars ball. How good was that? Brent Carlson out of Las Vegas, the sophomore. Otherwise, the Lobos would have started inside BYU's 20-yard line. Break for the Cougars. How long will they stay unbeaten? hotels in the U.S. and the Caribbean just want to thank everyone for traveling again and getting back to experiencing the power of being there. Leather seats, automatic transmission. Nowadays you'll hear people call this a truck. Well, a man knows a station wagon when he sees one. This car will only see off-road action if the driver backs over a flower bed. If this vehicular masquerade represents the high life to which men are called, we should trade our trousers for skirts right now. Polaris, it's not just a sled, it's a priority. Pay $79 per month or see your dealer for nothing down, no payments and no interest until April 2002. Welcome back. We are just about ready to start the fourth quarter with BYU. Their backs up against it. The Lobos at home for the first time in six weeks. And here's another look at Regal and the fumble and Carlson on the recovery. Otherwise, first and ten New Mexico at the 20 yard line of BYU. Cougars start from their own 20 and move behind Riker. Sukani, the big center. The offensive line is somewhat beefy at 1,479 pounds. BYU, how they've done so far by quarter, explosive in the second. But not today. Not today in the fourth quarter. They've only scored 30 points all season long. The offensive front averages 295. Three seniors and two juniors for BYU against a defensive line of New Mexico that weighs about 275. Second and seven. Thrown behind Rod Wilkerson. Loose football and New Mexico's got it. They're going to call them down. It's going to be BYU football. Childress came up with it. 
Doman does a good job. You never want to throw it across your body like that, but he's able to get away with it. You can see that ball started to come out. That's a fumble. BYU dodges another bullet. That would have been a big turnover for New Mexico. They said coming in, they wanted to get three or four turnovers. They haven't done that. That ball was loose on Wilkerson's shoulder long before the knee went down. I agree with you, Jim. <laughs> nice block. You saw number 20 Mahe right there throw a block that helped Doman pick up another couple of yards before Davis made the hit. Now this is something that Mike Borich coaches as Gary Croton was saying yesterday relentlessly. They said you're a football player first and a wide receiver second and 80 percent of the wideouts grade is based on how they block. Yeah these wideouts are pretty good blockers but from a defensive standpoint their coaches are going to tell you tell them that if you let a wide receiver block you you you've got some problems. Mike said he was born in the wrong period of time should have been a safety and played for Lombardi or Hallis. Near midfield a lot of running pickup of maybe two and a half Gary Davis another tough hit. And Doman doing everything he can to make something happen. Should have been a sack. He pump fakes Terrell Golden and then runs by him. Watch. This is what you're taught not to do. Never leave your feet. And you can see Golden jumps up and Doman just runs right around him. Doman is doing everything he possibly can to help BYU get on the board. One. One. At the 45, Regal out of Tacoma, Washington. David Hall again. And Gary Davis on the tackle. And they'll take that. They'll give BYU the five yard completions, come up, and make the tackle, and line up again. What they don't want to do is miss a guy like Mahi or Regal and allow those guys the, the big yards after the catch. Second and five from the 45. Stearns in the backfield. Flips over to the left of Brandon Doman. Flood to the left. Doman picks up the blitz. Dives near first down yardage. Renterina in there from Roswell, New Mexico. DJ, the sophomore, 6'3, 244. BYU just hasn't been able to get this running game going at all for the most part today. They show signs of one and then they they kind of sputter. Now they're using Doman as their main runner. Two out of 11 BYU on third down conversion. Doman eight carries 30 yards. And that big beefy offensive front averaging 295 pounds. The offensive line for the BYU Cougars surges forward. Luke Staley did not dress before the game. An eligibility issue. Discretion the better part of valor while they check with the conference and find out exactly how things stand what he did last week five touchdowns. And they've got to check with the NCAA as well. Spot it at the 38. In the direction of Mahe. We've seen these receivers drop some balls. Normally they're real sure handed guys. Today we've seen them drop a number of passes. Doman with the audible second and ten from the thirty eight blitz coming again Doman picks it up close to first down yardage up near the twenty seven yard line goes Mike Regal. 
came in averaging about 17 yards per catch. Scott Gerhardt on the hit. This is a play that they've been running all day. They haven't been able to complete it until now. When New Mexico blitzes, there's nobody in the middle of the field, and Gerhardt is one on one in the slot with Riddell. And anytime you're in the slot, you got a two way go. And with nobody in the middle of the field, look for them to come back to that. On the sprint out, wide open. Touchdown, BYU. No flags. They came right back with Riddell. Second touchdown of the season. As I said, when you're in that slot, you have a two-way go, and instead of running the post like he did last time, he sticks him and runs the corner, and there's nobody out there, and he goes untouched into the end zone. When you're on that slot receiver, you've got to take something away, and if you're playing off, you're taking nothing away. He's got a two-way go. Cougars knew they were going to have their hands full early on. Point after is perfect. Just shy of 11 minutes left to go. So it is Mike Regal from Tacoma, Washington, the senior on the receiving end, his second touchdown reception of the year. 27 yards in front. This is an ordinary cell phone. Mexico Aaron Edmonds bangs it from the 35 with the wind at his back five yards deep Hansen says thanks but no fun thanks scoring drive JC 80 plays three minutes 59 seconds the big 27 yard touchdown pass 80 yards in 10 plays 359 the big play 27 yard touchdown pass to Regal and notice how they finally started to get that passing attack working when they started going with the win. An 80 play scoring drive would be a record somewhere. Wouldn't that be something? That would be time consuming. That would be time consuming about 40 minutes or so the game would be over. That'd go into a sports center. <laughs> Lobos on the short end by four. Gut check time now for the offense and the offensive line. Big hole. Terrell McClure Sorensen opens it up for Hanson. Hanson's their change up back. He's the guy that's quick and fast. And you can see right now they just want him to try to get outside, use some of that quickness and speed, and see if he can break a long run for him. Kelly is 12 of 23, 118 yards. From the 31, first and 10. To the left sideline, caught up near the 39, Dwight Counter. Dwight Counter ties a career high with five receptions here this afternoon. And going into the wind is not going to bother the Lobos as much as it did BYU because they're throwing the ball short and quick. And when you're throwing it short, it doesn't have time to get up in the wind, so they're able to complete these balls. Well, you saw Guilford was about five yards off. That's way too much cushion to give counter. Second and three. Manning in motion. Diving over the top goes Hanson across the 40-yard line. He'll be shy of the first down stick. But a great effort by Hanson just to jump over and get all he could instead of just stacking up behind those big offensive lineman that got stacked up he just jumps over and now it's third and short Lobo fans did not like the spot four out of 12 on third down conversion Rocky Long's team idle next week then the Air Force Air Force is next up for BYU at Provo next week as well third and less than a yard First down for New Mexico. 
You can't bring him down up top. You cannot get him in the shoulders. When they need short yardage, they take Hanson out and bring in the big boy, Baxter. And look at this. He's got good feet. Look at him hop over right there and hop through. And you see nothing but shoulder pads. He's got great body lean. And for a guy 250 pounds, there's not a lot for you to hit except for those shoulders. And you can't bring him down by hitting him up there. Finally, Brent Kiesel came over out of Gray Bull, Wyoming. All 6'5 and 270 pounds of him. Hanson in the backfield. Baxter gets a run. Thomas out of bounds. So the Lobos are coming right back, trying to answer that BYU go ahead score that gave the Cougars a 17 13 spread. And the good thing about it is they're not panicking. They're sticking with their game plan, throwing the short, quick three step drop passes, running the counter inside, and then trying to hit them on the edge around the corner like we just saw. Total yards, absolutely amazing. The Cougars averaging 51 points per game and over 500 yards per game. Second and four, Kelly pulls it down. First down, New Mexico and more. Down at the 37-yard line goes Casey Kelly. Aaron Francisco made the hit. Great job of spreading out that defense of BYU. And then the quarterback draw, he just finds the seam and hits it. There's nobody inside because everybody's spread out. So he just finds a seam and runs through it. And the only guy that's there is the defensive back. And he's 10 yards downfield. There were only about 70 people in town that gave the Lobos much of a chance. And they were all <laughs> within this program. They were the players and the coaches. Rocky Long said yesterday to us, only the players and the coaches think we've got a shot. Kelly threw it low. Counter hung on. So every catch for Dwight Counter is now a personal bet. But they're just getting way too much room on the outside. These corners for BYU, and you see Counter does a good job of going down, getting his hands under the ball so that it doesn't hit the ground. But these corners are giving them way too much room, and you would think by practicing against their offense and their wide receivers day in and day out, they would be much better in coverage. Scout squads are too slow. Second and two from the 30. Well, a little razzle without the dazzle. Terrence Thomas from New Mexico, right here in Albuquerque, averaging about eight yards per rush. They are down by four. They've got an excellent field goal kicker. Five out of 13 third down conversions for New Mexico. They're in two down territory here going into the wind. You don't want to risk kicking a long field goal. Timeout New Mexico. Casey Kelly wanted to run the play but the coaches said no. And it was Dan Dodd who signaled the timeout from upstairs. So. We've got 7.20 left to go here in the fourth quarter. The Lobos, a great job against the Cougars. Every time you use your Discover card, Discover will make a donation to America's relief efforts until we reach our goal of $5 million. Just by doing what you do every day, you can help the victims and families of September 11th. To find out more, call 1-800-DISCOVER or go to discovercard.com. Looking for ways... Let's tack down a couple of more three-pointers. We're watching Wiggins in the backfield number 33 as the Lobos are faced with third and two from the 29 of BYU. Kelly. I think he's got enough to move the chains. Francisco on the stop, but not before Kelly moves the first down yard. See, he just turns it up on the option, and he knows where he's got to get for that first down, and he just dives for it. 
This guy, Casey Kelly, can't say enough about him making his second career start, but you would never know it today. From the 27, first and 10, New Mexico. Quarterback draw, Casey Kelly dives to the 19. Again, they Let's come back. Let's check in with our friend Beth Moen. Well, Jim, you talked about Rocky and his dad, Rod. One of the other things that he likes to talk about that his father passed on to him was the fact that he doesn't let outside influence influence the way he competes. You get the sense from Rocky and the players, they like playing with a little chip on their shoulder. They like this Maverick image. And a big win here today, if they get it, puts them in great shape. Two weeks to prepare for Air Force. And as we talked about earlier, five of their last six games would be at home, Jim. This, as we mentioned, thank you, Beth, the kind of game that can turn a season around. The end around. Reverse. And Reverse, but he's wide open. Touchdown, New Mexico. How about that? <laughs> they pulled out all stops. Derek Shepard to Javier Hansen. There was nobody. There wasn't a white jersey within 15 yards. What a great call. You've got to like New Mexico today offensively. They have pulled out all the stops. And that, there was no better time to call that play than they just did. They've been running this all day long. Now they run the reverse. They think, oh, reverse, reverse. And no one covers Hanson, and he's wide open for the touchdown pass. Javier Hanson could have fair caught it. His first touchdown reception of the year, the extra point. Boren Bozen is perfect. And listen to the crowd and look at the reaction of the Lobos on the sideline. One of the best of the year. Lobo's in front by three, but a lot of time to go with the explosive Cougars coming back. Yeah. Cougars of BYU 2017. But still 6.09 to go. Paul Peterson, 24, is back deep into the wind at the seven yard line. Raguel. Look at the gang pursuit at the 15. Nick Spiegel led the charge. Watch how many uh, Lobos touch the ball. You know, these plays work once a year because once you show it, people pr are prepared for it. But when they are not prepared for it and they work, oh, it is so sweet. Look how wide open Hanson is. He just walks into the end zone, and that's because everyone has been work running, running that play, and then they think reverse. Everybody runs to the reverse, and then they don't cover the guy that, that comes out the backfield. From just across their own 15 yard line with a crowd getting into it, trying to make as much noise as they can. Doman, little hitch delay. Andrew Ord out of Rancho Santa Fe. Do you think Rocky Long made the call, or do you think that came from Dan Dodd upstairs? I think it came from Dan Dodd upstairs. He told us yesterday that he was going to pull out all stop run plays that they've never run before, and they've done that all day. Give that guy a lot of credit for being aggressive and attacking BYU all day long. Second and four after a six-yard pickup by Orr. Blitz coming. Offensive line picks it up. First down for the Cougars. That's that catch and run for additional yardage. Justin Anderson out of Orem, Utah. Second catch of the game. Well, we'll see what Bronco Mendenhall and the defensive boys can come up with here. They were very concerned about the run and catch aspect of it and the fact that the Cougars are so adept at making defenders miss. But the key was the angles of pursuit. Batted down. 
Terrell Golden came with a safety blitz and got to Brandon Doman. He just comes inside and they get their hands up. You're always taught if you can't get to the quarterback, get your hands up in the air and hopefully you're able to deflect the pass. That's exactly what he did. Only at a 50% completion rate, 206 yards against a defense that is allowed 275 yards passing per game. Second and ten from the 33. That'll be a first down and look out. One man to beat. Halliday averaging 12 and a half yards and still looking for his first touchdown bumped out of bounds by Charles Moss. And that's what they don't want. You got to make the tackle. If he makes the tackle here. They line up and play again. Instead he misses it and Halliday's able to, to turn it into a big game. That's where B BYU's big plays come from. Yards after catch. Yak. And New Mexico knew that. And that's why they emphasized we've got to wrap these guys up. Halliday four catches 58 yards but he did the bulk of that after the missed tackle. Yak. From the 35. Trailing by only three. Doman. Dumps it off to Maui and good gang tackling again by the Lobos. Number 44, Gary Davis. Also Gary Davis also Gary over there. But without the running attack and Luke Staley in there, now you turn into a one-dimensional team. Now all you can do is throw the ball, and New Mexico is playing the pass. When they have that running threat and Luke Staley in there, it really keeps the defense off balance. Most of the short stuff with a quick release has been working. Second and 11. Just outside the 36. Doman wants the middle. Waits for the receiver to clear. Looking in the direction of number eight, Regal, but threw that one over his head. Golden was back there on the cover. Brandon might have waited too long. I mean, he looked only at Regal. He didn't look off him at all. You can see. He's starting to feel the pressure and he's looking at the pressure. Then he just throws the ball out there where Riddell is supposed to be and he wasn't quite there. It's a big third down play for BYU and this defense in New Mexico. They've, they've got to dis disguise the coverage. Right now is not a bad time to drop eight guys in coverage, force the ball to be thrown short and come up and make the tackle. Play sent in by the coach. Third and 11. Dropped at the 24 yard line. No flag. Excellent coverage by Dante Childress out of Dallas, the senior. He was working all over Andrew Orr. This is the second time we've seen Childress get his hand in there and get the ball out. You can see it looks like he got there a little early, but again, no call, so it doesn't matter. And then he's able to get the ball out. And I now, can't course, believe you admitted a defensive back actually got there early. I said he may have gotten there. <laughs> he had his arm draped around him, but they, they have been so inconsistent on the pass interference call whole game. Fourth down play for BYU. And the Cougars want to talk about it on fourth and 11. They've got the wind at their back. So we'll take... A timeout with 349 to go in regulation. Cougars on the short end. They say it's an extreme sport, but it only begins there. It's a sport that pushes performance to the limits and beyond. That's why when conditions lean to the extreme, winners stay cool with Phillips 66 injects two cycle motor oil. It gives you maximum performance on race day and every day. To let the good times roar, choose Phillips 66 injects for your two-cycle engine. Think smart. Think performance. Think Phillips 66, the performance company. Viva Las Vegas. Hi, I'm Joe Namath, honorary chairman of the 10th anniversary Sega Sports Las Vegas Bowl. Now look, after you open your presents, come join me for some great Mountain West Pac-10 football action Christmas afternoon at the Sam Boyd Stadium. It's the Sega Sports Las Vegas Bowl. Don't miss it, the Sega Sports Las Vegas Bowl. For tickets, visit tickets.com or call 
If you needed money to make money, how soon could you get it? It's 7 a.m. Is your money where you want it to be? Is there a smarter way to get where you're going? Banks were the first stage. Wells Fargo, the next stage. Welcome back live. That's Bronco Mendenhall in his fourth year as the defensive coordinator. A lot of sleepless nights this week. Yep, partially because of his new son and mainly because of the Cougar explosiveness. Fourth and 11, they will go for it. You've got to drop eight here. Doman with the audible. I think you send them. Option. And the Hogs up front do the job and throw the big block on the right side. McCubbin, 69. Archibald, 65. Needs the tight end, 89. First down, BYU. And that's why you have to drop eight people and play zone. It's fourth and 11. Just drop back, make them throw the ball. If they run it, you everybody's playing zone. You can come up and make the tackle. Instead, they blitz, they run the option weak, and there's nobody there to take the quarterback. Again, they outweigh the New Mexico line by almost 20 pounds. 10 carries, 47 yards for the quarterback. Number 11, Brandon Doman. Diving down near the 12. Might have stepped out of bounds at the 15. Justin Anderson. Inside the red zone, awesome, but not today. Just the one field goal. Second and three from the 15. Cougars on the short end, they're thinking touchdown. They're not thinking about a tie. Davis with pressure on, touchdown BYU! What a remarkable catch by Andrew Ward out of Rancho Santa Fe. A little bit behind him. Concentration by Doman as Davis was coming through and had his hands up and in his face. A 15-yard scoring strike, and the Cougars go back in front. Good drive by BYU. Doman, that guy right there, give him all the credit in the world. Did everything he could on that drive and has done it all day long to get these guys on the board. A year ago, they were thinking about making Brandon Doman a safety. He wasn't getting much playing time at quarterback. They thought about a switch. Lavelle Edwards gave him a chance to play. And I'll bet right now they are very happy they didn't make him a safety. Point after. Just snuck on through. No flags. Ten plays. 84 yards. 224 on the clock. And a 15-yard scoring strike from Brandon Doman. Watch Ord and the great concentration. Doman just does everything he can. He just throws it off his back foot, and, and Ord is right there and is able to pull it in. But you've got to go back to that fourth down play as we take a look again at the pressure. Watch Davis, Davis. is going to just about get there, and Doman just throws it off his back foot, just does get it away for a touchdown to Ord. But as I was going to say, you've got to go back to that fourth down play. Fourth and 11. You've got to sit back in zone and force it to be thrown short. If they're able to do that, this never happens. Doman turns 25 in December, is married, serves a two-year religious mission in Argentina. And the scoring drive that we told you about right there. So BYU back in front 24 to 20 in a dandy in our Mountain West Conference game of the week. Will BYU go to 6-0, and or will the Lobos come back again and even up their record at 3-3? Three and three? Hanson at the goal line. This one sails out of the end zone, so the Lobos ball at their own 20. Well, New Mexico's got to open it up a little bit now with 3 minutes and 29 seconds left. 
in the ball game, they don't have a lot of time to just run the ball inside with that counter like they've been doing the entire game. Now they've got to try to go downfield a little bit, get chunks of yardage, because they've got to get into the end zone. Kirk Robbins, number 80, wide to the left side. Wiggins in the backfield with Casey Kelly, who's had a terrific afternoon for the Lobo. Upended near the 30-yard line. It'll be about a half a yard shy of first down yardage. The sophomore out of Highland, Vermont, Paul Wackenhorst. They go to their two-minute package, which is smart. Blood to the left. One wide out to the right side. Kelly, a dangerous toss. It's just as well that was going nowhere anyway. Lucky he wasn't picked off. Wiggins in the grasp of Isaac Kelly. They've got to make sure that they get the first down. Now it's third and one, so you don't want to look way downfield. Just get the first down, then come back to the line of scrimmage and run another play, but they've got to get the first down. We have not seen Baxter for a while. Showing pass. Kelly's rushed 12 times, 54 yards, and leads the Lobo. Picked off. Jack Guilford, his second of the game, his fourth on the season. And that was not the time for a bad pass by Casey Kelly. He's got to see that corner sitting all over that quick out. They've been running that quick out all day he's got to see that corner he's got some pressure but Guilford does a good job he's at bump and run coverage right there and you can see he's playing aggressive and does a great job of driving getting in front of the receiver and counter's got to come back also when he sees that defensive back cut in front of him he's got to try to come back and knock the ball away now he's got to turn into the defensive back three interceptions is the big story there but the last one will be the most costly is there any reason you can see when you've got Baxter at 250 pounds and you need two feet, you don't give the ball to number 28? Well, of course, they needed to get some yardage in chunks, but they also had to get the first down. You've got three minutes to go. You've got to get the first down. You've got to get the first down, no question about it. So the Cougars nursing a four-point lead. Go with a double tight end alignment, and they'll work on the clock and keep it on the ground. The loose handoff. Great pursuit that time as the Lobos Kegler gets in there, number 93, and Doman never had a chance. That was on the ground. Almost a big turnover what New Mexico needs. And after this play, Doman got up and told Stearns, hey, you got to come to me and get the football. 225 and count it. Of course, if the Cougars can tack on three more, it would force the Lobos. Well, they've got to get a touchdown anyway. Four-point margin. New Mexico with one timeout left from the shotgun on second and 15. On a cross. Goal, goal, goal. Goal. Like a rugby scrum. And BYU, that is the third time that they've dodged a bullet today. Rogel coughed it up, and there was really nobody close by. And they punched the ball out. They worked on stripping all week long, and you can see does a good job of punching the ball out. And BYU, they'll put the ball on the ground. They've fumbled 16 times this year. They've only lost four, but they will put it on the ground. They put it on the ground three times today, but they've been able to recover all three of them. Three out of 13 for third down conversions. Third and 15 here at the New Mexico 37. Blitz coming. Doman down at the 45. New Mexico will have to take their last time out. Charles Moss out of Dallas. His second sack of the season. The junior. New Mexico's defense. The Lobos had to step up big on this drive after the pick. I mean, what a great series for them. They get put in an adverse situation. They don't pout. They don't hang their heads. They come out and they play even harder. And they're out three and out. You can see they do a good job putting pressure. 
This is the first fumble. They almost get the ball. BYU recovers it. They come back again. Completed pass. And Persley's able to just punch the ball out of there. Almost another big play for New Mexico, but that ball just bounces right back to BYU, and they are able to dodge that bullet. But this defense has played tremendously hard all game long. And then on third down, they bring the pressure again for a big sack on Brandon Doman. Now if their special teams can come up with a big play and block a punt, Edmonds back at his own 38 or check it at the 43 yard line. They're coming. No flag. And this one is halfway to Santa Fe. So the Lobos will start at their own 20. They've got 69 ticks left on the clock. Well, now they're saying they spot it at the 14-yard line. And with no timeouts, now they've got to throw the ball either outside where the receiver can get out of bounds or for the first down because once they get a first down, the clock stops while they set the ball. They have time to run up. 14 of 27. He better only throw it to red jerseys. Three picks in the last cost him about three minutes on the clock. Down by four. Manning at the 19. That used four seconds, but they need bigger chunks, right? They've got to get bigger chunks, but when you sit back in, in three deep coverage like BYU is doing, you've got to take what the defense has given you, take those quick outs, keep the chains moving, and then try to hit them over the top. Second and five. Looking in the direction of Manning. That had some steam on it. Justin Enya back there in the cupboard. Number 55. What they've got to try to do is, is do some pump fakes. Those cornerbacks are sitting all over those short routes. Give them a pump and go. Out and up, a stop and go. See if you can get them to bite and hopefully beat them over the top. Third and five. Very close depending on where they mark the forward progress. The problem is it's a short pickup and the clock continues to run. Lobos are out of timeouts. They do get a break. Clock is stopped as they move the sticks. And they're throwing right where BYU wants them to throw the ball. BYU is sitting deep. They want to give them the short stuff and come up and make the tackle. First down at the 42. Clock will stop. 45 seconds while they move the chains again. Got to get on the ball. Counter with a catch and Dustin Staley on the stop. This won't do him any good at all. That's a bad decision. You've got to throw the ball away. You can't do that. You can't take a sack in this in this situation. You've got to either throw the ball away or Ryan, throw it downfield. Ryan Denny, his seventh sack. Casey will just spike it, but that wasted at least 12 seconds. And that's a learning a learning experience for Casey Kelly. In that situation with no timeouts, you can't take a sack. Rocky Long and his Lobos two and three coming in beat Utah to start the year beat Wyoming last week 30 to 29 in between three tough losses to Texas Tech Baylor and to Utah and now they've got to go downfield they've got to get some big yards with only 22 seconds left no timeouts they've got to go down the field. Counter actually slipped. A career afternoon for that young man, Dwight Counter, came in with 20 catches, but a personal high here this afternoon. BYU is just going to sit deep in coverage, 
They're going to give you those underneath routes. They're just going to come up and make the tackle. Seven catches and 60 yards for Dwight Counter. Might be time to throw it about as far as Casey Kelly can throw. To the sideline, Counter. Kelly released to where he thought Counter would be. Counter ran it a little deeper. So the Cougars dodged quite an effort by the Lobos here this afternoon. A couple of times New Mexico took the lead, the last on some razzle dazzle when Derek Shepard tossed it 19 yards on the end around to number nine, Javier Hansen. Cougars came right back. A 15 yard scoring strike from Brandon Doman. So Gary Croak, 44 years of age, replacing the Great legendary Lavelle Edwards goes to six and zero, oh, but he knows he got away with one here against a tough, tough New Mexico team this afternoon. You give them a lot of credit. They did what they had to do today. They were missing their top offensive player, Luke Staley, but they were able to to make plays when they had to make plays, especially in the fourth quarter. Luke Staley, 311 all-purpose yards against Utah State and five touchdowns, but not today. An eligibility problem yanked before the kickoff. Let's go down to the sideline and join Beth Mullins again. Thanks, Jim. Well, you just missed a big sigh of relief from Coach Gary Croton. Uh, Gary, the leadership once again of Brandon Doman. How critical was that in the fourth quarter for great, you? Great play. It's fourth down, and I'm trying to decide what to do, and I just look at him, and I think he's going to make a play. And we went with a tough call, you know, on the option. I thought they'd be blitzing this, and Brandon executed it. And, you know, it just lifted us. Your defense is, has taken some heat from time to time, but once again today, they came up with the big plays when they had too late. I, w I wish we'd get a better early start, but they, they need, when we needed them, they, they did a great job. Their wind was a factor today, you know, blowing in that third quarter. And, and uh, you know, I thought our defense did a pretty good job. But, you know, it's just good to win. I mean, it's, wins are hard to get always. It's, we're happy to win. Congratulations, Thank Coach. You. Thanks a lot. Thanks. BYU goes to 6 0, Jim. Ask Gary about the intimidation factor said I don't know if we are but we do cause you to sit up and take notice. The Mountain West game of the week has been brought to you by Phillips 66 where we put the best in our super clean gasoline so you get the most out of your car. Think smart. Think performance. Think Phillips 66. By Choice Hotels International. The power of being there. Go. By Miller Lite, it's Miller time. By Polaris, it's not just a sled, it's a priority. And by the United States Army, an army of one. Thanks for joining us on our Mountain West Game of the Week from ESPN+. Plus. Again, the final score, the Cougars stay unbeaten 24-20 against New Mexico. Join us next week. We'll head back up to Salt Lake. The Utes host Wyoming for J.C. and Beth. We'll say so long, and thanks for spending your afternoon with us. The preceding, a presentation of ESPN+, Plus, the worldwide leader in collegiate sports.